death for those between the ages of 10 and 24. A new study has found that there are an estimated 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic floating in the oceans. Published in the PLOS One Journal, the study found that plastic is spread throughout the world and weighs around 270,000 tons. The researchers stated the figures were highly conservative and did not take into account plastic that may no longer be afloat. The Liberty Beat is made possible by the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. Support for Liberty Beat also comes from My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, December 11th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. Hundreds of Hong Kong police officers closed in on the city's main protest site Thursday afternoon to clear streets of pro-democracy demonstrators and terminate the mass civil disobedience movement that has occupied major roads in the South China City for over 10 weeks. Earlier Thursday, bailiffs backed by police to enforce a court injunction met no resistance as they removed protesters' barricades in one part of the protest area. USA Today reports the injunction was brought by a bus company that has complained of disruption to its business operations. Children who are exposed to higher levels of phthalate chemicals in late pregnancy score lower than other children on intelligence tests at age 7. A new study published in the PLOS One Journal followed 328 New York women in low-income communities from pregnancy until the children were 7 years old. Phthalates are generally found in soaps, nail polish, hairspray, shower curtains, raincoats, car interiors, and dryer sheets. Researchers at London's Imperial College and the University of Glasgow have developed an ingredient that makes food more filling and may help prevent overweight people from gaining more weight. The ingredient contains propanate, which is a natural substance that causes a reduction of hunger. This broadcast of the Liberty Beat is courtesy of Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Thursday, December 11th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Following earlier reports of 27-year-old Mark Felder's profound and startling level of pride in his alma mater, the University of Miami alumnus spoke to Onion reporters about his strong affection for the academic institution that left him totally unprepared for the job market and floundering in $50,000 of debt. I would not trade my time at the University of Miami for anything. Miami has the best college experience in the country, hands down. I had an awesome time there, and it's an amazing place. We've got awesome bars, awesome sports, an awesome campus, and we're pretty much right next to the beach. I mean, what more could you want? You have to be crazy not to go there. Felder, who paid over $140,000 in tuition, told reporters he takes an annual trip to see a Hurricanes football game and visit the university that failed to teach him any marketable job skills whatsoever, leaving him so financially helpless he was forced to move back in with his parents after graduating. Am I, am I, fight, fight, fight! Yeah, it's all about the U, baby, all about the U. That's what I'm talking about. Go Canes, baby! For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may bring up anything that you'd like. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Tonight, it's Ian and Danica with you. Hey, Danica. Hey, how's it going? We've got a special guest here on our third microphone tonight. It's been a while since uh, he has been on Free Talk Live. James Cleveland is with us. Hey, James. How's it going? Hey, man. Good to uh, good to have you here. I know that uh, you are a busy, busy, busy man these days, and uh, you, you, you've only got an hour to spend with us here tonight. I, I appreciate you spending some time on Free Talk Live because uh, you're going to be in the news over the next few weeks, uh, at least in the Liberty News. Hopefully we can get you some coverage in the mainstream news 
uh, because of what happened to you earlier this year during an incident uh, in which you attempted to be an independent journalist and go and report on uh, what was going on here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire. It was a suicidal man. Now, I don't think you knew that at the time when you were out there. Um, but you can tell us more of the story here in a moment. There was a man who was suicidal. The Keene police and state police, I think, were involved in dealing with him, or, or sheriffs, and uh, you got into a conflict with some of those police agents uh, because you were holding a video camera trying to report on the news, and they wanted to try to tell you where to go and what you had to do, et cetera, et cetera. How did you become aware of what was happening? Did you know that it was a suicidal situation? Uh, you know, and at what point did the the police approach you? Okay, so um, a local here in Keene tipped uh, some of the Liberty activists here off that basically we got a message saying that uh, the Keene Bearcat is in, in this area, which is the armored personnel carrier thing that has a uh, 50 caliber, uh, the mounting ability to mount a machine gun to the top, gun ports, um, armoring, and all that. So there has been a lot of controversy over these Bearcat devices. Uh, the federal government funded this Bearcat with your tax dollars to the tune of around $280,000. And ultimately, there have been activists who've been sort of watching, you know, well, what are they using this Bearcat for? When are they bringing it out? Uh, what are the examples, you know, the events that they're using as their excuse to trot this thing out? And so you'd heard the Bearcat was on the streets for this. Yeah, so I arrived on scene. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, details were very sketchy. But there were already some uh, liberty activists on scene when I arrived uh, filming. Mm -hmm. So um, I coordinated with them. And uh, at first I thought it was like a barricade situation. And the rumor was it was like a hostage situation. That was kind of uh, what the crowd was saying, if you will. And um, so I kind of coordinated with them. And I said, okay, I'm going to go around back uh, in case they make entry on the rear of the structure. Mm -hmm. You know, I want footage of that. You this know, was I just a house. Right. Exactly. It's like an apartment complex. Okay. Uh, I was out there approximately. Which, by the way, is good. But before you go on, this is a good strategy. Uh, one of the one of the things you'll see newbies do wrong, uh, and we're all learning. You know, you learn through making mistakes. Oh, I made mistakes but, that night. Well, of course, <laughs> we all make mistakes. <laughs> but uh, one of the things the newbies get wrong is they'll bunch up. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you go out cop blocking uh, for the first time, and of course you can go to copblock.org. It's a great website where they keep help keep the police accountable with video cameras. But if you take a group of uh, newbies out cop blocking, they'll they'll just kind of hang out together, and you know they'll all point their cameras. They'll all have cameras, which is great. You know, more cameras is certainly better. Um, and they'll point their cameras at the same thing, and they'll all get the same camera angle, and that's not really as useful as splitting up. But of course, if you split up and you don't have enough, like if you don't have like a team of people. People to split uh, yeah, up with. that was a mistake I made. So basically, safety uh, numbers. Exactly. So I think that's like a natural instinct. That's why people do that. They they crowd together. But um, so I was out by myself, and I'd been out there over an hour, and I I had just been going around like taking shots uh, from various points. Like hmm. uh, Cheshire County brought out their command center thing, and I'd never seen it. So I was taking some footage right. of that, like they had their mobile the big trailer thing, right? Their mobile headquarters and state police were on scene, and they had like a um, a KPD had some kind of command post thing that, you know, they were using, and I don't know, I was just taking all these shots. So, and, so you're out there for an hour, yeah. And are you aware that they're aware of you? Like, you know, had the cops seen you? Oh, had, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. there was a lot of bystanders. Uh, I might point out nearby uh, you. Uh, not at my time of arrest, okay. but uh, in the general area that I w was originally shooting, yes. So there was like a row of houses, and um, I wasn't sure what was going on. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go uh, behind these houses, and I'm going to see if I can get a better shot, a better angle of what's going on. And uh, I approached uh, kind of a group of officers, like, like the edge of their perimeter, and uh, approximately... I'm going to guess I was like 40 feet away. One approached me and asked me to move back. And I was like, okay. And that's what happens in the very beginning of the video that you have uploaded but is not public yet. So we're going to premiere some of that audio yeah. here uh, tonight. Okay, so that's what, what happens in the video. All right. And I, I felt like I was already pretty far back because keep in mind, uh, the group of officers is at the edge of their perimeter. So I'm like 40 
maybe 50 feet back anyway. I felt When like, he tells you to move back, you're already 50 feet away from the cops. Exactly. And, then, and they're how far away from like the door of this house, do you think? So I, I didn't know uh, the details on that. You didn't know which house it was, et cetera? I, I kind of was operating under the assumption that uh, they had... If, if they were closing off an area, like, okay, that's like the edge of the safe zone, right? Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the assumption I was operating under. But Seems like a safe assumption. I mean, if the police line or whatever is put up, and I don't, they didn't ha- actually have the police line, did they? It was just cops uh, kind of standing around? They did at some points, but mm-hmm. I, that's another important fact. Uh, I didn't pass any uh, tape or anything like that. Right. So, and actually, I think I have footage of people walking through. Uh, the scene as well, so I'm going to uh, display that in court. Meaning but. people walking in the area, within the uh, area yes. the cops were? Within the roped off area, if you want to call uh-huh. it that, the taped off area. People oh. who people who did not appear to be police related? Oh, there's no way they're police. Yeah. They're just like random people. But okay. here's the thing, it's like um, they closed off basically an apartment complex. Like, yeah. people live there. I mean, people need to go home, whatever. So people were kind of walking. They, no one knows what's going on there's so many rumors as i'm standing out there people are just talking uh and at first like someone told me some there's a guy with a gun in a tree and then someone else was saying like he he had barricaded himself underground in like a shed so no one knew what the hell is going right. on and i i don't know if that you know i guess tactically speaking the police made that's a good strategy for them to not tell people but on the other hand uh i think the public has a right to know and like, let's say that they had said, "This is a dangerous situation. Uh, this gentleman has a bomb or something." That like, like that might have motivated me. Okay, I think I'm going to leave. Back up, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the police officers that ended up arresting me, they didn't tell me what was going on. In fact, they're so like, by the time you got arrested, you really didn't know. You didn't know this was a suicide, uh, alleged suicide. I guess we could say. Yeah, and then uh, unfortunate. Okay, so I, uh, the story later I found out is the gentleman is wanted. I think he had some drug charges, and I think he did have some violent uh, crimes he committed. But mm-hmm. I'm not really clear on this whole guy's history. But um, he didn't want to go back to jail, from what I understand. That's that's what it was. I think. Yeah. I think I don't know if he was wanted or you know if he had a warrant out or what. Yeah, the deal I forget was, those details but. too. I feel like whatever it was he had done more recently wasn't violent. It was just drug charges, but maybe mm-hmm. something in the past. You know, because typically a drug addict will end up stealing to support their habits, so it could have been something like that. Sure, yeah. I don't even remember the guy's name, um, unfortunately. But 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 even the downtrodden, even those individuals who are not uh, quote unquote highly esteemed members of society, I I think it's important to go out and uh, help protect their rights. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So even if someone is a quote unquote I guess scumbag. You know, that doesn't mean they should be mistreated. They should get a fair shake at things. So my goal out there was to act as press. I was there to observe. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, there's a SWAT team in my uh, a couple blocks from my house. There's a Bearcat armored vehicle. Uh, you know, if I had known that I could have had footage of what was actually going on, like Garrett ended up getting, that was another mistake. Uh, his radio died. He didn't charge his radio, so. Oh. <laughs> uh, I so wouldn't you have been. Were actually, I think I hear you in the video trying to communicate with him. Maybe I'm mis- mistaken, but it sounds like you're trying to communicate oh, on the radio. And no, nobody that's, calls you back. That's a lady. So there were people uh, okay. in the house in the apartment complex, like, and and she was asking me what was going on. I said I don't know. There's I a police see. situation going on. I'm just trying to hear the document it kind of deal. So we got the audio from your video that has up until just the last few days been in police custody. They yep. when they arrested you, they took your camera and th- when was this by the way? Was this July? It August? was July 1st I was arrested. July. Oh, so all the way back in July, he has just now gotten the footage back from the police and it's going to trial at the end of this month. More coming up. This is Free Talk Live. John Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. 
Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw for free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your AMP will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can, of course, bring up anything that you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. James Cleveland is with us. You may know him better as Robin Hood of Keene. He was one of the <laughs> keynote speakers at this year's uh, Keenevention, and I would say arguably the best of the three keynote speakers uh, that we had, although all three were certainly Don't distinguished. Yep. <laughs> well, you were, there, were you there for it? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, okay, so. We, we was great, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Uh, the video is not up yet. That's still to come. I just started uh, on Saturday. So when I we do Keenvention, it's this yearly uh, convention that we have here in the Keen area. It focuses on activism. We record everything that happens on stage at Keenvention and release all of that. So if you don't attend in real life, which you should, but if you can't make it, then you can get a taste of what it was like by literally watching the entire curriculum, at least that which happens on stage. 
And uh, so I released them in order that they happened. And so we've gone through all of Friday and now the very first panel from uh, Saturday, which is the filmmakers panel, was released today. So we're getting closer. It'll probably be another three weeks. So probably right around the end of the year is when your keynote speech uh, will come out. And I think th it was just great. It was fantastic. And so that's who James is. He's here with us tonight. Uh, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You may be wondering, where is Daryl? If you're a regular Friday night listener, uh, Daryl is, he's taking a little vacation. He is away. It's his first vacation that he has had since 2011. And, uh, and this one is going to be spent at the Keene Spiritual Retreat. That's uh, a little fun name that we like to call the local jail here in the area. He's gone in for the weekend. Uh, he's got a three-day sentence. He'll be out hopefully on Monday if all goes smoothly. This uh, tracks back to an issue that he had in court uh, where Daryl is uh, – he was facing a charge about not like registering his car or something like – something, some sort of registration thing because he's a – they allege that he was a New Hampshire resident. He said he's not a resident, but ultimately I guess the judge determined that he was a resident, and so he was found guilty on that. Um, and when you don't pay a fine in New Hampshire, which he was is issued like a hundred fifty something dollar yeah, fine, yeah, about that amount. Um, if you don't pay the fine, then you can sit off the fine fifty dollars a day if you go to jail. And so ultimately, he decided he was not going to pay the fine to the state, and he asked for community service. But the thing is, when you ask for community service, the judge will then say, "Oh, well, you need to fill out this financial affidavit," which he filled out, and the judge denied. Because he does have some money that he makes for doing uh, affiliate relations here for Free Talk Live. And so the judge said, well, I determined you can pay the fine. So therefore, you will not get uh, community service. And so instead of that, you know, instead of paying the fine, he went to jail. So that's where Daryl is tonight. And I'm sure we'll hear more from him about his experience. Because they're likely going to keep him in solitary confinement uh, for those three days, which is something that they do to try to squeeze money out of people. Because when people don't pay the fine, the warden, he's told me this, the, the warden puts people in solitary who don't pay fines because they he knows it puts the pressure on the family members of that person because they know how bad it is for their loved one in solitary. They don't want that person to go to solitary. They don't want them to stay there that long. So, you know, if the person owes $500, then, you know, after a few days, all of a sudden the family comes up with the money that they supposedly didn't have previously. And sure, yeah. so um, it's also supposed to not, not be legal uh, what they're doing with that particular policy. So maybe there will be something that comes out of this as far as a legal change, because I know Daryl is well aware of that. So all kinds of interesting legal shenanigans going on here. And we'll get back to uh, James Cleveland and his story uh, here in a moment. But I also want to let you know about another interesting story, and that is In Freedom's Cause. It's an audio theater uh, piece. And that's uh, that means that it's, you know, there's no video. It's just audio. They've got a really nice soundtrack that it was apparently custom made for In Freedom's Cause. It's the story of William Wallace, you know, from Braveheart. It's like Braveheart, but historically accurate. And it actually features some uh, some name actors like Joanne Froggett from Down Downton Abbey, uh, Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes from Chronicles of Narnia, and James Cosmo, who was actually in Braveheart. And you can go and order it Right now, get the family four-pack of CDs. It gives you four copies of uh, In Freedom's Cause. Get it for half off by using coupon code FTL. There's a study guide uh, that you can get with it, and it's a real crash course in the struggle for freedom. It's In Freedom's Cause. It's one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history. It's a great audio theater package. You can go grab it at infreedomscause.com. Don't forget to use coupon code FTL. So James Cleveland is here with us. Uh, he does Robin Hood of Keen. That's sort of what you really made a name for yourself on. But this summer, you stepped forward and you know took the reins of independent journalism and have been punished for that. Uh, no good deed goes unpunished, as they say, James. And now you're facing two years in jail. Two Class A misdemeanor charges, one year per Class A charge. Was it disorderly conduct and resisting arrest? They yes, you and they. So really, they filed three complaints. But oh, that's right. There's it's like, like an uh, alternative theory, right? Yes. Yeah, so this I've never seen before. Alternative what is, theory. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, so there's two parts of the disorderly conduct uh, statute here in New Hampshire that they're saying. Well, 
It's basically like they're saying, we're, we're not sure which one he violated. <laughs> like, that's my interpretation of it. Uh, we don't know which one he violated. It was one or the other. Yes. So we're going to leave that up to the judge to determine which one he wow. violated. <laughs> so I couldn't believe that when I saw that. I mean, I, you know, for, you think you've seen it all doing liberty activism as long as some of us have done it here. And they just throw curveballs at you sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's funny, too. I went to, uh, so I, I went to a lawyer and I was just uh, consulting with him and, uh, he was saying like uh, he he was shocked by that too, and he was saying like uh, they they uh, apparently like uh, when you quote the RSA like they did it wrong, and he was just like he thought it was really sloppy, but um, I don't know it was just fascinating. Uh, so the prosecutor offered me a plea deal. I think oh, it really? was ninety days uh, before the arraignment. Actually, it was I think it was ninety days suspended for two years. Uh, so I declined mm. that, and uh, you know. And then I was speaking not to a her. bad offer, although I must say, I mean, as far as things are concerned, 90 days, meaning suspended for two years, meaning that the 90 days would be over your head for a period of two years in that if you committed some other misdemeanor felony or major motor vehicle violation, they could then bring that 90 days down onto you. But your position is you didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You know, you're just acting as the news media trying to record a situation wherein the police were, you know, gathered around some man's house who was allegedly suicidal ultimately he did allegedly end up shooting himself uh in that situation you had actually been arrested before that Mm -hmm. uh that occurred so you didn't even know that happened until you got out uh no well uh actually they told me at the uh police station at the police station yes one of the uh i think it was a kpd officer told me that but uh anyway so then it was funny too i spoke to the prosecutor on the phone recently and she's like well since you didn't take the plea deal i'm gonna request the full sentence so two years you didn't have to record that phone call, did you? No, I didn't. Oh, cause she called me out of the blue, but mm-hmm. um, I was just shocked by that. Like, okay, you know. You know what you can do, uh, and this is a possible recommendation for activist types out there, is if you get Google Voice, which is a free service from Google, and of course, like anything from Google, they could shut it off tomorrow, but, uh, you know, because you never know, like Google Reader was going really well, and then yeah, they just and all shut of a it it's just like, oh, hey, we're not going to support this anymore. So you never know about Google, but uh, I've had a Google Voice number for a long while, and one of the nice things about it is you can start recording anytime you want. Yeah, mm. I've got a Google Voice. It's great. So when someone calls up and it's like, oh, this is the prosecutor, you can just hang on one second, hit the number four, and then it'll announce that this call is being recorded. Oh, to both parties? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, I'll uh, look into that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, and then, of course, it saves it on there on Google, and you can download a copy in MP3 form. More coming up here, 855, 450 free. We'll continue with James's story on the way. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. <laughs> but don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Following the conclusion of yet another day marked by a litany of tedious and unavoidable realities, The Onion spoke with sociologist Dr. Timothy Coghill, who told reporters that the nation would be forced to go through all of it again tomorrow. As our projections demonstrate, tomorrow, like today, every man, woman, and child in America will wake up and do it all again. All of it, including traffic, the workday, bad coffee, your kid's soccer game, laundry, a struggling economy. Statistical evidence also showed that the nation would once again endure traumatic childhood memories, Twitter, anxiety, poverty, consumerism, rampant abuses of the legal system, joint pain, uh, racial inequality, global warming, the steady erosion of civil liberties, Violence, loneliness, disease, unresolved intimacy issues, the ravages of age, hunger, sexual frustration, existential dread, the looming specter of death. For more on this unending story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network.
Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Bring up anything that you want. We are talking with James Cleveland, a.k.a. Robin Hood of Keene, who was arrested this summer for the dastardly crime of recording video of police, uh, as has become, unfortunately, all too common in the United States. We've got some of the footage from that arrest. Uh, we're going to play the audio here, which it's the first time I've even seen it because the police have been holding on to it. They took his camera when they arrested him and just gave it back. When was it, James? Uh, just uh, the other day? Um, Friday or something like that? It was either yesterday or the day before. Okay, so very recently then. So yep. this week. Uh, so we'll get some of that audio out here in a moment, but I also want to let you know about a great Christmas gift for this holiday season. Sherry's Berries is back on Free Talk Live. And I'd like to uh, apologize to the both of you that we don't actually have any Sherry's Berries because <gasps> when oh. they... Uh, we, we received some Sherry's Berries last week uh, in advance of this promotion and uh, subsequently ate them within um, approximately an hour from oh, their Ian. being received. Uh, they are fantastic, though, and they are freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries. They're amazing. Uh, they're, they really, they're nice. They've got different types of chocolate, actually. White, milk, and dark chocolate, all in one package. They're topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. And you can get it for just nineteen ninety nine, and that's over a forty percent savings, or double the berries for just ten dollars more. Now you'll need our discount code to take advantage of the deal. The code's easy; it's FTL. What you do is you go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. You click on the microphone in the top right hand corner and type in FTL to get the deal. Now look, there's also other cool things they've got at Sherry's Berries. They've got other unique products like uh, Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. I can't say I've had those, but uh, I'm sure they're excellent if the Sherry's Berries quality oh, remains sure, the yeah. same. Sherry's Berries is fantastic. We've had them over the last uh, year or so here you know, on Free Talk Live. They're great uh, great gifts for not just the holiday season, but uh, any time of year. And you know, why bother going to the store and waiting in lines and dealing with the hassles of parking when you can just go to berries.com, click the mic in the top right, and type in code FTL to get the the special deal, which again is just $19.99. That's where they start. But after Add in the 10 bucks to double the berries. You're going to want to do that. You uh, More berries, better. More berries, definitely better. So berries.com, code FTL. 
We got James Cleveland here. We're gonna let's play some of this audio, James. Yes. Uh, and because this is what was going on uh, outside of a man who was being allegedly uh, suicidal, and the police had come out with their armored personnel carrier. You just wanted to know what the hell was going on. You had your video camera with you. It's fairly dark in this footage. It looks as though you're like on the side of some houses. Uh, and then a, a police officer approaches you in the darkness, and I'm going to try to pump up the volume here so folks can hear the first conversation. There's, there's two conversations that transpire here. Uh, one officer approaches, and this happens. How's it going? This is kind of limit. Excuse me? Sure. So he asks you to head back, and you agree. You're being reasonable. And I might point out, I was already pretty far back. Safe, safe. Yeah, you said you were like 50 feet back from where the police seemed to have their line in this case. So you can see the, the officer walking towards you, and he keeps indicating to you to keep going. Distance? No, keep going. Oh, I thought you had to... And you continue on back. Keep going. I think this is a good keep remove. Keep going. Go. Right now. I'm, I'm going to stay here. No, you're not. You're going to be arrested oh, wow. for angry. Be, uh, interfering with a police. I, I feel like I'm giving you guys a safe remove. No, you don't understand what's going on. Go around that corner. Well, I'm exercising my rights as a uh, member of the press, and I accept the risk <laughs> I'm putting myself at. <laughs> if, if you have things to attend to, I don't want to keep you. No, he turns when you first start that line. Uh, he he's got he gets this frustrated look on his face, mm -hmm. and he turns and looks over his shoulder. It almost looks like he's looking for his boss mm -hmm. at that point, who ends up coming around later yeah. uh, and then arresting you. But it looks like he's kind of looking for backup. He's looking to look to someone else to inf help enforce his authority because you've decided that you've gone far enough at this point. And it was interesting because, uh, well, in a lot of these cases, when the cops will tell people to move back, get back, mm -hmm. uh, it's always arbitrary. However far, whatever the distance is that the cop wants you to get back. I've had cops on a on a scene where they're messing with somebody on the street tell me I need to get, you know, six feet away or ten feet away or you know, just some arbitrary number. We've seen video footage of uh, cops in Austin demanding someone go over like across the street where there's a light post, and so I think. What it would have been interesting, and obviously you don't get to do these things twice, but it would have been interesting to have you ask, where would you like me to go? Yeah, because, that would have been a good question. Because then he would have to select some arbitrary point mm -hmm. and indicate that to you, and then you could decide whether or not you know you wanted to go that far. But in this case, it was just like this game of he just kept saying, keep going, keep, going, keep, keep going, keep going. And then you did uh, stop, and I have to say that was pretty uh, pretty ballsy of you here. <laughs> Let's continue. I will. I will remain here. Is that do not acceptable? cross this line? Okay, Keen, I will agree to that. This is Keen's situation right now. If yep. somebody comes, then they might tell you otherwise. But for right now, don't cross this line. Sure. All right. So he walks away. Now, this is this a state police officer? Yes, and that's actually I think an important fact. Uh, I I don't think I would have been arrested at all, or probably even approached if it was KPD. Uh, KPD. Uh, the activists over the years have, you know, been filming them a long time. They're they're used to uh, people monitoring them. Uh, I'd say they're some they're a lot more comfortable. Th these two state troopers they they appeared and actually during the DUI checkpoint in Walpole, uh, it was the state police freaking out. Uh, That's yeah, correct. It sounded like the, they're getting pretty <laughs> yeah. demanding and angry with you. In the DUI checkpoint situation, I was threatened for yeah. getting out of a passenger side of a car. They we had gone through Garrity and I had gone through the police checkpoint. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided it was a nice night. It was the summertime at, at that time. It was late September, but it was a really warm night. And, you know, I didn't want to be in the car while Garrett was dealing with this checkpoint. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get out and take a walk. It's a nice day. I, I'm in the passenger side. I should have no obligation as a passenger to stay in a vehicle. What if I didn't want to stay in that vehicle? Like, what if Garrett was yelling at me and I was just like, I'm out of here. You know, I don't want to deal with you. Uh, shouldn't I be free to get out of a, of a vehicle once it's stopped? Well, apparently not, because the cops cornered me. Like, they rushed in on me as soon as I stepped out of the vehicle and started yelling at me to get back in the vehicle. And ultimately, I said, well, what if I don't feel like it? I just want to take a walk. They told me they were going to charge me with disorderly conduct if I didn't get back in the vehicle. 
for it, just wanting to walk. Just yeah, that's right. Yeah, I get a much more uh, military vibe from the state police here yes. than uh, KPD. And it's interesting. They even call their little uh, headquarters, they call it like the barracks. The, yeah, and, Troop and, C. And Troop C, Troop Charlie. And, you know, they all have uh, like high and tights and, uh, you know, like, oh, we got to get out of the car and put our hat on. And, you know, it's very similar. It's very militaristic. Um, they definitely want to be in control of the situation. But So at first, uh, he's telling you, move back, move back, move back. You stand your ground at some point. You move back for a little bit. Yeah, I figured I'd, uh, okay. How many feet was it? Because it's dark. It's hard to, it's hard to tell in the video. Uh, So basically, and it'll it'll be very clear in in the court when I have a map, Mm -hmm. but there's like edges of the building and each edge, like there's like a corner and then it's like a couple units and then there's another corner. Okay. So it's like one corner to the other. So I'd estimate, I don't know. Like a house length. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard for me to guess now. I'm going to say 40 feet, 50 40 feet, 40, feet, 40, yeah, something like that. So you went back, you stood your ground. The dude wanted you to go back further, but he ended up agreeing with you because mm-hmm. it's a lot of times when you're talking with the police or other government bureaucrats, you're always negotiating. It's it's always whatever it is they tell you is always up for negotiation. Oh, yeah. And I didn't want to get arrested that night. That was not my intention. And no. I was like, I'm I'm far enough back. I have a zoom on my camera. Okay, I guess I'll move back a I probably could have stood my ground uh, during the initial encounter, but I figured, like, okay, I'll give them a little bit of room. I don't know what's going on here. Well, they do have some leeway to clear an area, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that you were will. I think that the argument they're going to make is they were within their rights to tell you to move, and of course you're going to make the argument that this is freedom of the press, yep. and you should be able to report on stuff and be able to get relatively nearby a situation. Um, and of course, as you pointed out, you saw some people walking within the police cordon <laughs> yeah, area. It's, just, it's it's amusing. So it and definitely actually, seems like you were targeted. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know if they knew who I was at the time, but they definitely knew who I was uh, later on. All right, well, we're gonna come back with more here, uh, James Cleveland, and he may stick with us a little bit longer uh, here tonight. I don't know if he's made that decision up yet or not. Uh, he was teasing us with that earlier. 855-450 freeze the toll free number. If you've got questions for him, it doesn't have to be about this. I mean, he's also known as Robin Hood of Keene, so maybe you got questions about that. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10,000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! 
the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up... Uh, Danica's got some good news for people who live on Native American reservations mm-hmm. and like their marijuana. Uh, we'll uh, share that with you in a little bit when we get a chance. Of course, uh, all kinds of under- other interesting news uh, out there, including a face-sitting protest going on in the United Kingdom over their new anti-pornography uh, regulations or statutes or whatever that's been passed. They've been, they've been banning extreme porn in the UK, and people are angry about that. We'll share all of that when we get the chance, but we've got special guest uh, host James Cleveland with us here. You might know him as Robin Hood of Keene, and uh, he was arrested over the summertime for being the independent media and... I wonder if a WMUR or you know major television news cameraman would have been treated in the same way, James. You were uh, threatened. You were told you had to move back. When you did move back, you were ultimately told you didn't move far enough and then ultimately arrested. And I've, we've got the audio of your arrest coming up here in a moment. But what we played first was audio of you being threatened initially. So first a cop state police officer comes up to you and tells you you got to move back and then you start moving and he keeps telling you keep moving keep moving keep moving and at one point you after moving about 50 40 50 feet away from where he where you originally were you say i feel like this is a safe remove i'm gonna stop here yeah and i i use that uh word remove specifically because uh, uh i think that was the term that was used in the glick decision but ah, okay uh, now what the- is the glick decision <laughs> uh so that there basically there's a gentleman he was a lawyer uh it was in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. He was film. He filmed a police encounter because he thought they were. Um, I don't remember the exact details, but abusing uh, the person they were arresting. Yeah, they arresting. were arresting someone. Yeah, and he was like ten feet away. He wasn't talking to him. He wasn't, you know, doing anything. He was just filming, and they didn't like that. And they asked him, "Does it record audio?" And then they arrested him for mm-hmm. wiretapping and I think resisting arrest and whatever. He ended up suing him, and he he won. Thankfully, he was an attorney, so that helped. Uh, yes, that is huge. Uh, most people probably would just plead out. And, you and know. I think the ACLU, actually, of Massachusetts helped him with that case. Yeah, so basically they found that, you know, you have a right to film the police. You know, that's like a cardinal. There there have been so many this cases. This was the Circuit Court of Appeals, I think, that found that, right? Yes. That it was well, fairly high level public. case. It's, you know, he wasn't in a private place. That's mm-hmm. correct as well. Yeah, so the wiretapping thing is just complete garbage. Yeah, you have a right to film the police, especially when they're in the pro- uh, process exactly. of their own duties out in a public place. Uh, yeah, and I think that was actually in the Glick decision, too. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of my motion to dismiss. I use language like that. But, um, yeah, so I just agreed with this gentleman, like, okay, I'm not going to pass this point. 
And, you know, I made an agreement. I'm going to abide by it. And then he told you that this is KPD, Keen Police, is, I guess, seen, and that they could change the agreement. But <laughs> Keen Police never came back to talk to you. Yeah, that's an you. interesting point, too. They, yeah, they never came back. Uh, so it was like his boss, as you pointed out, came over here. And he actually identifies as the boss, which is interesting. But I got that audio if you want to jump into yeah, it. Yeah, if you want to play it real quick. All right, so this is about a minute and a half after the other guy leaves. Mm -hmm. So the first guy who threatens you and has you move several, you know, 40 some feet away, he walks off, presumably to go and tell his boss about you. And then uh, the boss shows up about a minute and a half, two minutes later. So here's the uh, the rest of the audio. Oop, here we go. You can talk and walk and I'll be happy to explain it to you. So this is the other guy coming up, tells you to walk away. Well, I, I mean, I'd prefer to stay here. Is that you're not going to go? Okay, and I'll explain it to you as we walk. Okay, whether you like well, it or not. Well, we just agreed situation. to the line here, and, and I, I changed it because I'm his boss. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to respectfully decline. It's the ever-changing line, <laughs> and this is the problem with being obedient to the police: is that they'll keep pushing the line back. And yep. this is a perfect example of that. Um, there's no limits, apparently, to what they can get away with. And it'll be interesting to see how this case plays out in the courts, because we see this behavior from the police constantly. And if activists do stand their ground, a lot of cases, you'll you'll be all right in a lot of cases. But you never know who you're dealing with, and they can always just make up some BS disorderly charge to hit you with. Yeah, I think I think I've previous to this, I think I've been threatened with arrest for filming like three or four times. So And you have not been arrested in those incidents. Yes, yeah, so I always like managed to uh not get arrested. There's once where I I thought I was done. Like it was in a, a Concord court and they swarmed oh, yeah, me. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, that was ridiculous. That was a pretty scary <laughs> one. <laughs> I had like four bailiffs like almost like like charging me. I was like, I'm getting the heck out of here. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's right. And didn't you keep recording as you were walking? Yeah, out of the I building? made I made my stand at the door basically, yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> so I had an escape route land, but. So here's the rest of the audio. If you don't move, you're gonna get arrested. This um, is a dangerous situation that you know nothing well, about. Well, I understand. Okay? I accept the, any risk I'm putting myself. No, in. you're not. There's a police dog over there, and you're interfering with it. I How far was this police dog? I d I never saw a police dog. <laughs> The entire time I was out there for an hour, over an hour this and a half. Seems like a ridiculous claim on his part. He probably thought that James maybe smelled like birds and the dog wanted to go get something. Maybe there was a police dog, but I, you know, I guess I'll have to watch my footage. I don't remember seeing a police dog. They are calling a, a KPD officer Joshua English, so maybe he'll testify that the police dog was there. I think he. He's their handler. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I need I'm to not go around that corner, with corner and I will. Be I happy feel like to you're, you're creating a scene by doing this. I'm telling you to leave. I have that authority, and I'm exercising it. I mean, you can choose to pack up and walk, or you can go with us. I don't want to argue with you. We have more important things going on. I, I mean, I feel like I've given you guys a safer move. I don't care. What I'm you well feel. within my rights You're to be here. You're in the line here. of fire. Go. Let's go. You're in the line of fire. <laughs> yeah, which is completely <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, there were. Uh, Garrett Ian had a line of sight to the guy. I have like so houses. He was filming out front. You were behind the house right yeah there's like okay i guess there's a one in a trillion chance that somehow i'm in the line of fire but the the bullet would have to go through, through like the houses like multiple <laughs> houses and somehow <laughs> magically hit me <laughs> well right and and the the claim of the cops here is that they're protecting you and and you tell them, hey, I'm willing to waive, you know, whatever liability. Of course, the cops would have no liability whatsoever, but this is the <laughs> excuse that they're using. They're trying to pretend like they are somehow caring about your safety. And you're saying, well, no, no, don't worry. I'll waive. You know, I'll take my own risks here. Thank you. I'm the media. Yeah, who who is the, the master in this relationship? You know, according mm, yeah. uh your servants. So obviously I'm not the master if I can't say, well, thank you for pointing out that this is a risky right. situation. Uh I'm going to engage in skydiving anyway. Thank you yes. for the warnings and thank you, you know, thank you for telling me I'm in the line of fire, but I'm here acting as press and I won't, I accept the, the risk. That's fine with me. Now in this next part of the video, he grabs you. Is he grabbing your arm? It appears like he's grabbing you and dragging and yeah, moving he, you I don't physically. I remember exactly. I definitely know he, he tried to grab the camera and I think I, I, I comment on that and he's like, like pushing me back with his body. Yeah. He's definitely physically moving you in some way here, but he hasn't yet put you under arrest. That's still to come here. That's correct. There's a man around the corner that's armed. Whether you like it or not, you're moving. Hey, Let's go. Please don't touch my equipment. No, I'm escorting you out of here. Let's go. 
I'm, I'm acting as a member of the press. I mean, you guys, I and gave you guys a, self, a safer move, which is required. Around the corner. Around. I, I agreed to do the line. Is that no, not I told corner? you once. I changed it. Now get around that corner or you're getting arrested. Uh, That's it. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Excuse around. me. No, no. no okay, I'm, I'm under arrest. And that's it. Yeah, and actually, I have an audio recorder running in my pocket. The oh, audio, really? Yeah, it's not that great because okay. it's like uh, you know rubbing against the pocket and sure. stuff. But something though. It it keeps going. Uh, I'm gonna sit down and transcribe exactly what was said. But what uh, I mean, can you highlight? Obviously, you probably haven't listened to it in a little while. But yep. uh, any thoughts on you know what was said there? Oh yes. Um, and how long it goes for after the camera shuts off? Yeah, it goes for I don't know. I'm gonna guess a minute, and mm. it's basically. Uh, at that point, I'm like thinking in my mind, okay, I'm now under arrest. I'm going to, you know, remain silent kind of deal. Uh, you know, I think I, I said a few things too, but it's like gays are just lecturing me like the whole time. It's pretty, it's amusing to listen what to. What was the, the name? Rights? Was that the name of the Yeah, Gaser. Gaser? Uh, Gaser was the arresting officer. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, he got a little frustrated with you there at the uh, the very end. <laughs> so this is coming up, James. You're going to court uh, the end of this month on this, right? Yep, on you the uh, 30th. For, you filed for a continuance, however? Uh, no. You did not? Nope. I'm going to just take it. Really? Okay. Because I know you were talking about going with a continuance. Yeah. Um, so I had considered that, but uh, the prosecutor would object to it because she, it, for some reason, they it are- It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if she objects. In my, from my understanding, uh, the general rule is that everybody gets one continuance. Yep. So you probably uh, could get one. Yeah, I figured I'd just go ahead and do it now. It's kind of like a deadline. It's a good. It motivates me to to get mm -hmm. prepared and do it. And even if I lose, I can immediately appeal it to a jury trial. That's I'm, correct. Uh, unless, unless it, it push down another couple months. So. Unless they cut your charge down to a class oh, B, that's, that is as it is a possibility called, too. Right before the trial, and they yep. do that right before the trial, and then you get whatever you get in the in the bench trial. Uh, so there's more coming up here. The toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. James, do you have to go, or are you gonna stay? No, I'll stay. All right, cool. James is hanging out. Right on. Uh, we're gonna continue. We got all this other show prep to talk about here tonight. And of course, you may call in about anything you'd like. Eight fifty five four. 50 free. Maybe it's freedom of the press that concerns you. This is Free Talk Live. More coming up. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, December 12th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.07 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,224 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $352. Antiwar.com reports the Syrian civil war has gotten so convoluted and created so many rival factions that sometimes it's hard to know who is fighting against whom at any given time. It also gives rise to conspiracy theories. One of those theories is that the Islamic State and the Assad government are secretly in league since the two largest factions in Syria rarely clash directly and rather focus on the smaller players. It's not as though they never fight, of course. Syria launched high-profile attacks on the Islamic State's capital of Raqqa earlier this month, and the Islamic State is still bragging about the recent capture of a Syrian airbase in the Raqqa province. And while other rebels grouse about the comparatively little help from the Islamic State against Assad, it was really those rebels who started attacking the Islamic State in the spring, and the Islamic State has turned the tables on them, expanding their territory at the expense of the other rebels. For their part, the Islamic State is presenting the direct fight against against Assad as step two, saying they need to consolidate the rebel territories first before they can make a serious run on Assad territory. Similarly, the Assad government is seeing the smaller rebels as easy pickings with the US airstrikes and internal rebel fightings keeping the Islamic State mostly at bay. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, just hours before a potential government shutdown, the U.S. House of Representatives on Thursday passed a massive $1.1 trillion government spending bill. The funding bill passed with a vote of 219 to 206 with a majority of support from Republicans. Things were in doubt earlier in the day after the House took an unexpected recess around 2 o'clock for seven hours due to dissent on both sides of the aisle. Many Republicans were incensed that the proposed spending does not include language to defund President Obama's executive action on immigration. Democrats opposed amendments to Wall Street reform language in the bill. Though lawmakers in the House came to an agreement late Thursday, the bill still had to pass the Senate before midnight to avoid a government shutdown. The Senate approved a two-day extension of the current funding levels in order to give itself more time to review and vote on the legislation. In the House, 162 Republicans voted in favor of the bill, 67 rejected it, 57 Democrats supported, while 139 opposed. The spending bill, if signed into law, would fund the government through September, with the exception of the Department of Homeland Security, which runs out of money early next year. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Antiwar.com reports CIA Director John Brennan angrily condemned the release of the summary of the Senate's CIA torture report, saying the report was flawed and incomplete and unfair to the torturers who were not interviewed for the report. The reason no CIA officials were interviewed by the Senate Intelligence Committee for the report? Well, that's because the Justice Department would not allow it because those torturers might face legal ramifications for all the laws they broke. Even Brennan conceded some of the things they did were a abhorrent, but shrugged off the notion of liability for anything, saying there was no easy answer and that it was unknowable if the torture really worked or not. FPP Radio will be taking a short hiatus while I spend the next three days in jail for refusing to pay a fine after being found guilty of a residency charge and operating a vehicle with expired registration. FPP Radio News will return on Tuesday, December 16th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
In a move that puzzled patrons of the global fast food chain, McDonald's launched an extensive ad campaign this week entitled, And Yet Is Not Beef Itself an Expression of Wanton Lust? to air at prime time on several networks. The lengthy advertisement, which makes scant reference to any products or promotions, posits to viewers that perhaps beef is merely a symbolic expression of lust in its most wanton and depraved form. When we call for beef, what are we really asking for? Is it the caress of a gentle lover? Or the blade of an executioner? The rage of steel on bone? Would you yourself deny beef? Would beef deny itself of you? In other news, a spaced out flower child is grooving on a doobie wave. A new study reveals nothing Pfizer's lawyers can't take care of, and the parents of an adorable child on a TV show are most likely insane. Thus ends nature's majestic cycle of weekly news reviews, only to gracefully begin itself anew in exactly one week's time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, with you tonight, you've got Ian and... Danica. We also have special guest co-host, James Cleveland. Welcome, James. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks for uh, for sticking with us here. You'd initially come in to talk about the video footage that has yet to be released publicly, but I imagine you will be doing that at some point over the next few weeks uh, the video of you being arrested for the first time uh, this summer. You fin- it finally happened after <laughs> after flirting with it for uh, like over a year. Because I remember when you'd first gotten here, uh, you were like hot. You were like really hot on uh, making your stand in the court system yep. or whatever. And uh, there were some close calls where you almost got uh, arrested, but ultimately you managed to defuse the situation. Uh, but it happened. Over yeah, the freedom summer. of speech and freedom of press is like one issue I'm willing to fall on the sword for. Yeah. Like, okay, go ahead and arrest me. And you did, by the way, you at the time, you're an entrepreneur now, but uh, at the time you had a job. I mean, yep. you had somewhere to be the next day or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember which day. Was it Was it a weekday? It was a weekday. Yes, wasn't it was uh, July 1st. I don't remember. Sunday it was a weekday. Monday. You had to go to work the next day. That's right. right. I got bailed out that evening and then uh, I did make it into work. So. Right. Oh, that's good. It's yep. risky, though. I mean, if you know, getting this is a, one reason why a lot of people won't allow themselves to be arrested or put themselves in a situation that could result in an arrest is because they got responsibilities. They've got stuff to do. They sure, got yeah. you know, the dog to feed at home or the family to take care of or, uh, you know, a, a job to go to the next day. And you put all of that on the line and you stood up for freedom of the press and it was awesome. So thank you for doing that. I have a question for you, James. Like, it, So that happened... In July, it's yep. now December. So, why has it taken so long for you to get your your things back? Had, was there just like a a rain that there was there a certain time period where they had to keep it? I know you mentioned something earlier about needing to, you know, file a statement for it. But was there a required period that they had to hang on to it before they get it back to you? Uh, no, part of it is my fault. You know, I procrastinated and I didn't oh. get it done. But the other thing is, um, so they. We're saying like, okay, the the camera and the audio device are evidence. Like, uh, we're gonna show that the video we're gonna use here came from the device. So basically, I had to waive my right. I don't remember what it was called, but uh, basically, I said, okay, I won't challenge the validity of the video. I'll admit that it came from the device. You know, that it's a genuine video, because I, I wanted my property back. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm like, okay, you know, and I think it'd be stupid anyway to say oh that's not the you know real video or something right like okay that's my defense you know what i mean like why would i do that so that makes no sense why would you say that it's not i don't know i mean maybe well according to the prosecutor she made it sound like she okay so when i got the camera back it had like it was in a bag and had like the chain of custody like everyone who Mm -hmm. did it and it's in a sealed bag uh when i was talking to her it sounded like she was gonna remove it from the bag in court and play the video off the device and i was just i was floored by it like okay wow now this is actually i'm just realizing a moment uh, at why you're say- saying this that the uh, prosecutor in this case is the keen police prosecutor yep why is she prosecuting this when it was the state police who actually oh. made the arrest oh you heard the the gentleman say earlier he said this is kpd's scene right so it's like they're acting under their oh, they're acting on behalf authority oh, their jurisdiction or whatever you want to call it huh 
Wow, I didn't know that. They, I didn't know they could do that. Yeah. Just kind of shuffle the, uh, well, the they agents d- around. They do that every pumpkin fest. So when they mm-hmm. bring in all the uh, surrounding town, uh, they even bring in officers from Vermont for pumpkin for pumpkin fest. Mm. I don't know if they have arrest powers, but they're acting under uh, KPD's authority, is my understanding of it. Maybe they but, do. Maybe they get deputized or something like that. Yeah, they. It, you know, it's like, and the whole thing. You know, I wasn't out there. I I just wanted to observe. I didn't want to. I wasn't talking to him. I wasn't no. doing anything. I just, what the hell is going on? Well, when the cop first approaches you in the video, he's 100 feet away. I mean, he seems like he's coming from quite a distance. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, the whole thing is ridiculous. And I think the video before I got a check, I think I set up my tripod and I was shooting. And as the officer is walking towards me, I started the video you just played. You can hear you setting the uh, tripod up in this video. You okay. can hear the you extending the legs yep. on, the, on the tripod, or at least that's what I believe uh, is is going on. So uh, you're welcome to share your thoughts on freedom of speech, freedom of the press. The toll free number here is eight fifty five four fifty free. Now there's no shortage of these videos. I mean, this is just your version uh, of the, of one encounter. Uh, but if you go to photographyisnotacrime.com, there are countless uh, iterations of videographers and still photographers being harassed, threatened, intimidated, and arrested by various police from all across the United States. And in your case, James, it's fairly typical uh, what happened to you. And it's I, I hope that you can have success with this um, because it's hard. It's hard to beat disorderly conduct yeah. and resisting arrest. In my case, I was uh, hit with those two charges, but not for recording video. I was hit with those two charges for, or excuse me, I was hit with obstructing government administration and resisting arrest for standing in front of a police car when they were arresting a young lady in, in downtown Keene. Ultimately, I lost on both of the charges at a bench trial, but appealed to a jury trial, because you can do that in New Hampshire uh, when you've got Class A misdemeanors, which you have. And at the jury trial, the jury did not convict me of resisting arrest, so I only got one of the two charges on which I was convicted. But unfortunately, I got a, a harsher sentence because for, you know, I guess whatever reason, they can punish you worse when you go to a jury trial. Even though you would receive whatever sentence you received at the bench trial, the judge can just you know disregard that and sentence you even harsher for bothering to go to a jury trial. And in your case, James, the prosecutor actually threatened you, and you don't have audio of this, but she threatened you over the phone saying if you don't take the plea deal that she offered, that she's oh. going to charge she's going to try to get you to go to jail. So point of clarification, she said basically because you didn't take the plea deal. Oh, I, she was taking it off the table at that point. Like the the deal's gone. Uh, yeah, because you didn't take my plea deal, now I'm going to ask for two years in prison or two years in jail, I guess. Wow. Yeah, so I was like, okay, you know, I guess I'm not going to, you know, I guess this is it, you know, I'll see you in trial kind of deal. But Now, see, yeah, maybe you two can clarify this, but I was under the impression that uh, you go to jail for crimes or whatnot that have offenses for less than a year. and you That's to, correct. You go to prison if it's longer than a year. That's generally correct. So could you possibly stay in jail for two years then? You mean in the county jail? Sure. For two years? Yeah. There are certain circumstances in which that can happen. So, for instance, like if you are pretrial confinement, you can be in there for, you know, let's say you're in uh, in jail for three months awaiting trial. In James's case, he's bailed out, so he doesn't have to right, do that. Right, doesn't have to go. Uh, but if you know, if he were in there for three months and then he were to go into trial and they were to hit him with uh, a year, then, well, usually that three months will be credited. I forget. There was a situation where I was actually in jail with a guy who was there for more than a year, and I'm trying to remember what his circumstance was that allowed him to be there for that length of time. Certainly, if they do concurrent uh sentences meaning that both of the year long sentences are happening at the same time that would obviously keep him in jail so yeah so it's not two separate events it's two events that happened at the same time in his case disorderly conduct and resisting arrest uh, yeah and it, you know um hopefully i wouldn't get anything you know hopefully i wouldn't even get a year in jail hopefully nothing, nothing but well you have no criminal record right i have no criminal record i have no history so of violence helps. one interesting thing during the arraignment uh the prosecutor was like, I'd like to put additional bail requirement on Mr. Cleveland um, and prevent him from uh, having access to firearms and weapons. What? And and uh, also from drinking in excess. And, you know, I told the judge, like, uh, well, I have no history of violence. I'm not a violent person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even see how this is relevant. And I don't drink. And he's like, 
okay, well, uh, I'll I'll say you can have weapons or whatever. I'll deny that one, but since you don't drink, you, that's not a problem for you. So now I can't drink excessively, whatever that whatever means. Whatever that means. <laughs> but we know it when we see it. More yeah. than one drink, I suppose. <laughs> well, who knows? I don't know what that. Yeah, they're, it's just arbitrary. I, I will say too, getting arrested wasn't as bad as I thought. And then uh, during well, didn't you say they tackled you? Yeah, they pretty much like tackled me to that the ground. That sounds kind of bad. Well, I mean, it wasn't like I was uh, like injured or anything, but well, then you got lucky. I mean, if you got tackled to the ground, yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, I mean, your your head could have hit the concrete or something. Like I, I don't that, know. Or... They threw the camera, like they turned off the camera, and then next thing I know, it's like ten or fifteen feet away. Like they had to go retrieve wow. it. Now there was a tripod attached to the camera yes. at that time. So I think they like grabbed it and threw it, which I was not happy Were about. Were you on but... the grass or was this concrete? It was on the grass. Okay, so that was good. That's probably part of the reason why you didn't take any damage when yep, you were going for down. sure uh we'll come back with more here and why they why they treated you that way uh, that doesn't make any sense at all more on the way 855 450 free hi everyone i'm chuck woolery after putting a few thousand couples together on love connection you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath smart mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn and you get clean breath for about 12 hours other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour gum and mints now well, they just cover it Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Cabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense, they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. 
freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free here. You can bring up anything you want. We've got James Cleveland with us. He is also known as Robin Hood, but now he's facing two years in prison for the dastardly crime of recording video in a public place. Uh, that's seriously what's happening. And it's not just him. I mean, there are people all around the country. You can go to photographyisnotacrime.com, and you can see multi- a multitude of examples of photographers, both video and still uh, being harassed and threatened and arrested by the police. It's uh, its insane. And apparently Illinois is looking at recriminalizing recording the police there, which I haven't. I don't have all the details on that, but that's, that sounds horrible. Illinois has historically been one of the worst places for uh, recording the cops. And, of course, you know, we're all here as part of the Free State Project, which is the idea of moving liberty-oriented people to the same place so we can get active together. And we can talk about uh, that in a little bit and how that makes your situation unique, I think, uh, James. But first, I want you to know about Pro XPN. If you are online, whether it's your laptop, your desktop machine, your handheld device, you need to look at Pro XPN if you care about your privacy. Because right now, your internet service provider, whoever that happens to be, is probably saving your surfing history. Wherever you're going, it's, lo- it's likely being logged, and those logs may be kept for, in some cases, as long as five years. So if you don't have something like Pro XPN to protect you, well, everything you're doing is out in the open for your ISP to sell, to use, to turn over to the police, etc. You can stop that from happening right now by going and getting started for free over at proxpn.com slash FTL. It's free to get started there. You get a limited account with limited bandwidth, but when you're ready to upgrade to unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites, you can use our discount code. And what ProXPN does is they encrypt your internet connection. So your ISP, the coffee shop administrator, somebody sniffing your Wi-Fi packets, they're not going to know what you're doing because you're encrypted with ProXPN. Use our discount code to get the sweet 50% off deal off their annual account price. It brings the price down to 5 bucks a month, uh, about 5 bucks, a little bit less than 5 bucks a month. Code is FTL50, that's FTL like Free Talk Live, the number 50, as in 50% off. Or, uh, yeah, so that's FTL50, and then uh, risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Uh, so there's nothing to lose here except your privacy. But again, you can go and get started for free right now, proxpn.com slash FTL, promo code FTL50. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Uh, Ian and Danica in here with you on this Friday night. Danica, I mean, you've been, uh, you're relatively new to New Hampshire. When did you make the move here? Uh, let's see. I technically arrived in like late May, like the last couple days in May. Okay. So not even quite, a, not even a full year, like just not over a full half year. a year at this yeah. point. Um, you know, what, what was your impression? I mean, when you, before you moved to New Hampshire, you moved here as part of the Free State Project as James and I did. What was your impression of, you know, folks who've been arrested in things, you know, situations like James? That Was that attractive to you happening up here? Does that scare you? Like, oh, my God, th- these guys are getting arrested. I don't want to come to Keene or I don't want to come to New Hampshire. Was that something that kind of put you off? No, actually, when I was first scoping out New Hampshire to move, um, my, uh, you know, a former boyfriend and I at the time um, were looking at cities we want to go to and he wanted to go uh somewhere because it was just a he wanted to go to manchester because it's a bigger city a lot more people lots more things to do Mm -hmm. i wanted to come to Keene because i wanted to you know see all the activists in in their elements so to speak see what was going on uh, and you know and be a part of it so it's kind of it's not really scary when people get arrested it's very sad more so that they get arrested for very silly things, such as filming police. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being told that they can't walk. I mean, it's just, it's it just kind of makes me think, wow, why? You know, maybe if there was an arrest for something that could, you know, that may slightly justify it, like say someone that like obviously shot someone trying to get away and get arrested. Okay, you know, you're arresting him because he's a potential danger. But why are you arresting someone that's quite obviously not a danger and is, you know, observing and wanting to get facts? Like, how, like, why are you wasting my my taxpayer money 
on something like that. Why, James? Why did they arrest you? I mean, what's the what's your speculation here? Because you were so far away from this situation, it seemed that you didn't you couldn't even see what was happening. You were on the other side of the building. You were at least a couple buildings away. It seemed like in the in the video, it's hard to get the perspective. But from what you've told us, you weren't anywhere near the scene. I think it's because I I said no and I tried to exercise my rights. I think that was. Like I said, the state police are not used to dealing with activists, and I, I think that played a huge factor in that uh, kind of a challenging of his authority. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was trying to be— He even says in the video, I have the authority to tell you to move, and I'm exercising it. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to be, like, calm and collected, you know, but, hey, I'm out here acting as press, and I strongly believe that I would rather film something where there is uh, potential for uh, violence or— uh, so the police, you know, uh, it's great. Like, okay, you go and film a traffic stop mm -hmm. or I don't know, you film something kind of um, like run of the day, like let's say them issuing a ticket to someone or whatever. Uh, I think the times where video is most critical though is during those times where there's a potential for uh, for violence, like I said, for sure. the police using their, their powers, you know, their police powers to arrest someone, you know. You could help protect somebody after the fact. If the police get violent during that arrest, your video could come in real handy. Then. Exactly, and it could even and be... And they know that, It right? can be used by them. Uh, so during the Keene State riots up here, uh, during Pumpkin Fest, um, uh, now KPD apparently is going to use some of the footage, you know, to prosecute people. Footage I shot, by the way. Yeah. Which I knew they would do when I was shooting that footage. And if I was filming... Uh, let's say a scene and someone like punched a police officer, I would give them the, the footage. Yeah. No problem. So like, what is the issue where you guys don't, why don't you want to be filmed? I guess what is they the have underlying issue. Yeah. And they always say that uh, to quote unquote normal people like, Oh, well, what do you have to hide? You know, you should be fine with whatever, you know. Well, their claim is that they're trying to keep you safe. You're in the line of fire. Oh, yes. And uh, <laughs> look, uh, look. You, keep you keep me safe by arresting me. That's <laughs> they were more, it seemed like they were by, more... By putting me in jail for two, for two years. years. That keeps right. me safe. It seems like at the time they're more interested in keeping people away from the scene rather than trying to prevent the you know the poor gentleman from you know using that gun to you know not you know not even just hurt himself but hurt other people i mean he could, could have easily used a gun on other people let's go to todd he's in st george utah listening to kznu hello todd hey hey todd you're on the air Listen, i i yeah can you hear me yep go for it i i love talk radio it's my favorite thing in the world driving home listening to talk radio getting caught up on the news and everything but with you guys, it's always, every day, just the police. It should just be called the police show. Well, you know what? It does and seem like it's... Either. It does seem like it's been a little heavy on uh, bad cop content recently, but you know the fact is, right now the police are in the news for being awful, and Absolutely. we're you know we're just reporting. In this right case, about, what about the uh, what about the incidents like where two cops are sitting in the the restaurant in Vegas, just minding their own business, and anarchists walk in. Shot them both in the head, went in and shot a couple people in Walmart. Yeah, we talked about that when that happened. That's certainly not appropriate. I mean, I don't yeah, support those incidents happen, and that's why. I'm sorry, let me let me just get what I'm. That's why police are antsy in situations. Well, just because the cops are antsy doesn't mean that there's that, no free. That the, can, can, can you I'm hold a, on, Todd? Yeah, I want to bring you back here, Todd, to give you a chance yeah, to get your thoughts out. Because just because the police are antsy or nervous or scared uh, doesn't mean that they should have the right to shut down the freedom of the press. But let's let Todd speak for himself here in a moment. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here on Free Talk Live. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home-cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay 4-in-1 Smart Organic Cooker. Unglazed Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins, and minerals for your good health. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. 
Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we also have Skype, by the way. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. And, of course, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Bitcoin is on the rise. And there's really amazing news about Bitcoin and Microsoft announcing they're taking it. Uh, we can get into that deeper if we get the chance later on. You can go down to the second Bitcoin conference in Texas. The Texas Bitcoin conference is happening this year uh, in 2015 at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin on March 28th and 29th. It's going to be the best and brightest speakers in the Bitcoin universe, the latest exhibitions in Bitcoin. Plus, they're going to be hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. And they've even invited the entire Texas legislature to allow them to see firsthand that not enacting complicated regulations encourages innovation and job creation. The Texas Bitcoin Conference will prove that Bitcoin is a force for good. If you're knee-deep in Bitcoin or just curious... This is the place to be, March 28th 
and 29th. There's also even a kickoff event if you get there early on the 27th. And uh, they're ask, they're actually calling out for white papers right now if you've got an idea to make the community grow. Get in touch with them at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Free Talk Live was in attendance last year, and we broadcast live from the event. We're going to be doing the same thing this year, and I have to say I'm pretty excited. I had a good time uh, in their first iteration of this in 2014, but I think this next one's going to be even better because they're moving the location to downtown Austin at the movie theater. Previously, it was out at a racetrack, kind of out in the sticks, and so I'm excited to have this event. Event downtown. I think it's going to bring it to the next level. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Go and get your tickets there now. It's $25 off if you use coupon code Free Talk Live. Run it all together as one word to get that discount. $25 bucks off. Uh, we're already pretty affordable tickets over at uh, TexasBitcoinConference.com. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Todd is with us here tonight. Uh, Ian, James, and Danica are in the studio. And Todd, you had some concerns. You feel like Free Talk Live is talking about the, uh, the the bad cop stories too often on the air here. And I have to let you know, I'm cognizant of that. And I have, you know, I've been trying to talk about other things on the air, but the cops just keep giving us all these bad news stories mm-hmm. where they're murdering people and getting away with it. And it's just now we've got protests that are happening in the streets all around the country. As a result of this, there's just it, there's an endless stream of news about this. And it's more important now, I think, than ever before. Um, and But just before you go on, Todd, I want to let you know, as was pointed out before, James, you said if a cop were to be hit by some person, you would give the cops that a video footage that you recorded of that. As oh, absolutely. Uh, to me, video is about keeping everyone accountable. You're not anti-cop, right? No, of course not. I have three police officers in my immediate family. My uncle is a police officer in Tennessee. Uh, I have a cousin who's a prison guard in Florida, and I have a cousin who is a um, school resource officer. So. You know, to say I'm anti-cop would be ridiculous. You know, I think uh, there is a very uh, valuable service, if you want to call it that. There's a legitimate role for protection. Uh, if the police do something good, you know, I'll give them props I'll for it. I'll support them, sure, yeah, absolutely. which is which is why I I want over. them to arrest murderers. I want them to uh, find violent people and people who destroy property. I have no issue with that. Please, you know, go investigate those people. That doesn't mean they should be mistreated when they're arrested and, you know— yeah. Maybe that's why I'm out there filming as well, but uh, I support that 100%. So there was a case where... Um, hold, the, hold the thought on the on the case. I want to give okay. Todd a chance to jump in here. Todd, go ahead with your thoughts. Okay, I've got ADHD, so I've got to, I've got to say two things I don't forget. Sure. One, um, I understand completely about the, the stuff that's going on, and I don't agree with uh, the Garner situation. Okay. Again, in all the police situations, though, None of us are there, and I can. Here's the example that I use. I had a police officer. I mean, I had a neighbor across the street from me that called the cops on everybody in my on my street Ugh. to the point where we most everybody moved for for ridiculous things. Wow. One night, her husband came over and was threatening me at my door. And in Utah, I'm a concealed weapons carrier. I happened to have my weapon on that day. I. He could see the bulge on my shirt, underneath my shirt, and he's standing in my doorway. And I just said, look, please go home. Get off my effing doorway. Yep. And I was pretty calm but stern. So he went home, told, called the cops, said that I waved the gun in his face, that I was threatening to shoot him and all that kind of stuff. The police show up, four officers, and I didn't have a porch light to turn on. So they come to the door, and they're really standoffish, and I'm not even know. You know, I don't understand why. I just know. I knew the cops were going to count. I was expecting that. Mm-hmm. By this time, I'd already gone upstairs, put my my gun away, locked it up, everything, and they said, "Can you please step out here?" And I said, "Sure. What's the problem?" And they said, "Put your hands up. We can't see him." I'm like, "Okay. What? I I, did, I don't understand. What's the problem?" They and then one of the officers drew his gun. I said, get your hands up, because I had my hands wow. in my pocket. So I put my hands up, because I didn't want to get shot, and then stepped into the light so they could see me and freaked on them. I called, you know, I called the desk sergeant the next day, called the captain, called the police chief, I knew him, and explained the circumstances. And they explained to me that the call was that I had stuck the gun in the guy's face. Okay, I can understand them being a little bit more 
resistant to a guy standing in the shadows with his hands in his pocket, but still don't draw a gun on me hmm. unless you know. But I was certainly acting the part because I was miffed, pissed off, okay? The, the, the thing, so I understand that side of it. I think it's ridiculous that they tell you to step up or step, step back and then they arrest you. I think that stuff's crazy. But the thing that I don't hear from any kind of journalism, and I, I just like to leave this question out there for you guys, is there is, I don't know how many, we were talking about this at lunch today with a friend, how many million, I mean, how many police officers are there are there in the country? There's probably a, a million or more. And on an average throughout the year, how many of them are shot versus how many of them have this what it looks like in Garner situation. Blatant. Not very many of them are uh, are killed. I, I don't know how many of them get shot, but uh, policing is not a particularly dangerous profession compared to other professions. It's not even in the top ten of most dangerous profession. Uh, I I know. I'm sorry, but I know in in my small travels, I know three officers that got killed in duty. Well, well, Todd. In my um, small travel. Let, let's let's agree that let's say that uh, policing is a dangerous job. Um, well, well, number one, they, they chose that profession. And number two, uh, my interpretation is it's like they're putting their life on the line, quote unquote, uh, for the rest of us, right? That's the idea. So, uh, they should be willing to take the risk, uh, to, um, like, let's take your situation instead of just showing up and you have your hand in your pocket and shooting you, they should put themselves in a little bit of danger and, you know, like they did and, and not shoot you they're taking a risk right maybe not even pull the gun like you see what i'm saying so it's like they should uh be willing to take a little bit of risk in order to uh, preserve rights and you know i understand i've worked a dangerous job i had a construction job where i did roofing and someone died on the job site that's one of the most dangerous jobs i think actually injuries were very common i had a we had an air hose uh fly off the coupler broke and, you know, a guy lost his leg. So it was Jeez. a dangerous job. I was working uh, 80 feet in the air. You know, I'm building scaffolding. I'm doing concrete work. I'm bu- doing carpentry. So I understand dangerous jobs. And, uh, you know, I can appreciate that. But uh, that doesn't necessarily excuse the behavior. You know, I comes- I, I chose that profession. You know what I mean? Can I, can I, can I, can I say something? Please, I'm sure. not excusing the, the, the behavior either. I, I do think that there needs to be. It needs to be brought out, and there are uh, bad cops. There's no doubt about it. There's bad teachers. There's bad everything. There's bad uh, radio show hosts, right? There's bad of people course. in the world. <laughs> but I really, I challenge you guys as journalists, and you're using the journalist, you know, press card. I challenge you guys as journalists, because Ian, you, you came up and said, well, not that many. Well, come up with the exact the, the facts, and, and, and I... I like the fact that I can sleep at night knowing that I'm, you know, that there's somebody in patrolling my neighborhood. Yeah, and if I they like provide that. protection, I'm all about that. Yeah, if the cops are out there actually going after real criminals who hurt other folks, then they have my support. The problem is they're doing that not as often as they should. I thank you for the call, Todd. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. (coughs) But don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four-herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. 
And don't forget about Oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Email is easy, instant, and free, and that can be real embarrassing. Email lacks the eye contact and body language you get in face-to-face -face conversation, or the tone of voice and other nuance you hear in a telephone conversation. Email is just words, often few words. We're all smothering in spam, so we often reply in terse fashion that's easy to misunderstand. And email doesn't cost you a postage stamp, and it lacks the deliberation time it'd take to walk to the snail mailbox so it's easy to succumb to the oh yeah stimulus response trap when in doubt don't snap back at snippy messages you get you may have mistaken the sender's intent and unless you're sending AOL to AOL there's no unsend for more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now hit survivalspeech.com I'm Holland Cook so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. And uh, you can also join us online. Go to freetalklive.com to enjoy the features that we have there on the website for you. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, you can support the show by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. Amp stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is a simple one. You send five bucks a month in, and you can do it automatically through PayPal with any major credit card. Or you can use Visa or MasterCard right through our website. And you get on this auto program, and then every month the money's just, you know, transmit it over to us. We can take that money and then invest it into Free Talk Live and get on more radio stations. We've got over 150 stations today from coast to coast and beyond in the United States, uh, even so far out as Guam. Uh, and then we can get on more. We can have 300, 400, 500. It's all possible, but it takes money and you can help us with that. You get perks too, like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only uh, podcast. There's also an AMP-only Facebook group. So go to amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Get started there. We really appreciate it when you do that. Uh, James Cleveland joining us in the studio. Ian and Danica in here as well. Uh, we've been talking about James's arrest over the summertime for recording video, um, in this case, of a, a situation that you didn't even know really what was going on, but it ultimately turned out to be a suicidal man who allegedly did take his own life. But you were just trying to record video of it. The cops demanded that you uh, get further away from the situation, and you're already fairly far away in the in the beginning. And then you went, up, you kind of walked away, and they wanted to go to wanted to go further, and you stood your ground. Ultimately, the the cops came back around and threatened you again, and you continued to stand your ground as a member of the ostensibly free press. And you were arrested and charged with two Class A misdemeanors for your efforts. 
and you're now facing two years in prison as a result of that. So that's kind of where we started the show out tonight, and it's it's sort of morphed into a larger conversation now with our last caller about the police. And he made some uh, statements about the dangers of the job, and he wanted numbers. He says he wants numbers. Well, I've got some numbers, and it's not hard to get these numbers. You can just Google cop most dangerous job. And uh, one of the first results here is from the Foundation for Economic Education, FEE.org, about how dangerous it is to be a cop. We'll tell you about that in a moment. But first, Brian is in Oklahoma City. You're on Free Talk Live. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, I want to talk to Ian about the James Cleveland. And I had some questions for James, too. But okay, sure. regarding that, that caller, you know, that said he feels safer with these cops. I mean, has he ever considered, you know, the scary people that he wants to be protected, you know, from the cops, you know, by the cops from him? that they may become cops. You yeah, know that's I mean? a good point. And one thing I like to ask people, um, I wish I'd remembered to ask him, maybe he's still listening, but uh, if the police are there to protect and serve you, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I get nervous when I see police, especially mm, when yeah. I'm driving. Sure, like, yeah. I don't feel like these people have my interest at heart. You know, Even though I've dealt with co- police countless I get nervous. times, I still get nervous. You still get that adrenaline way. rush. And, and uh, it's really inspiring the way, you know, Derek J acts so calmly. And maybe inside, like, you know, he's tremendous anxiety. I don't know, but I feel the same way when I encounter these people. Uh, yeah, but, even even like the um, some of the most hardcore, uh, quote-unquote, police supporters I've ever met, I, I'll ask them that question, like, uh, do you get nervous if the police are driving behind you, or do you get nervous if you see a police officer? And they say yes, and I say, well, well, why is that? You know, I, I think that... Because um, they know there's a threat of violence there. They exactly. know there's a, there's a man with a gun, yeah. and that he could use that, or the nightstick, or the pepper spray, or whatever. And he maybe they don't even uh, think about it, too, but maybe he he does something wrong, and he's not held responsible, and uh, we, we give them all this authority uh, as a society. I say we, but society yeah. gives them so much uh, authority, you know, I don't necessarily uh, agree that um you know m- maybe they have some legitimate authority quote unquote like if they're getting murderers let's say but even then i'd still want uh competing police and like let me choose what protection agency i want but boy that's that's a nice idea i hope that we see that i hope we live to see the day where we can actually choose not to fund the government police and instead fund some sort of alternative protection agency i would like to see that day. that would be a huge step forward and one thing too uh, so government solutions are like a one size fits all. I mean, no one like uh, okay, um, no one can agree. Like, let's say you have a group of friends, it's hard to agree just to, like where we're gonna go out to eat. Mm-hmm. So to say, oh well, uh, as society we should spend I don't know ten percent of our uh, income on policing. Well, maybe someone else wants to spend eight percent. Someone else wants to spend twenty five percent. Maybe someone else wants to spend zero and exactly. just go, go, you know risk it. Just get out there and take their risks and not have any sort of protection service. So, Brian, what other questions did you have? Well, Ian, you know I've I've heard you over the years say that you know don't take a plea and how you encourage this civil uh, civil disobedience and uh, I don't know it's kind of sad you know when when people you care about are are going into a cage or, or whatever you know I mean do you stand by that you know at at times like this do I stand by recommending people not take a plea deal yeah of course. And do civil disobedience and, and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, I stand by uh, not taking a plea deal. I don't. I don't advocate. I, I don't. You know, demand people not take a plea. It's just a suggestion that I make. I go out there and I recommend to people that they, you know, learn about the plea deal system and why it's such a bad idea, and suggest that they not take the plea deal. But I don't get upset if somebody decides to take the plea deal. People should do whatever it is is in their best interest. And yeah, I certainly exactly. Don't, and I certainly don't advocate uh, civil disobedience. I don't think it's right for everybody. Uh, it's you've got to be in a real special kind of part or a role in life to be able to do civil disobedience. You know, having a job, for instance, is probably going to cut you out of that uh, possibility, unless your boss is really super cool and is willing to let you pick up where you left off after you get out of jail. So I think that there's a right time for uh, some of this stuff. But I think that generally not taking a plea is a good thing to do, especially if you're up here in New Hampshire, because not taking a plea means clogging the system with more cases. Um, but you know, if, if you're facing serious charges and there's a pretty nice plea deal offer made to you, I wouldn't blame you for not taking it. 
Well, hey, I, uh, well, for taking it. What do you think you could have, have done differently? You know, like, I was thinking maybe, like, you could have maybe been asking questions instead of, like, saying no to the yeah, cops. That probably would have been a wise like, thing to do. Uh, another thing, the, the key mistake I made, I think, was uh, being alone. I think that was a terrible mm-hmm. decision. Uh, you know, I moved to New Hampshire to be uh, with activists, and here I am basically by myself uh, filming the police while there are activists in the area. I think that was a huge mistake on my part. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done differently to um, – I don't know how I would have – maybe I could de-escalate more. I don't know, but I, I felt like I was well, being fairly cooperative, like- but – Maybe it could have been like, is this illegal for me to, to be here? Yeah, is that probably would have been a good <laughs> That would be a good question. It's definitely true. General rule when dealing with police is whoever it is that's asking questions is the one that's winning. And that's a, mm, that's a general that's a good... statement. And that's a, a kind of a rephrasing of an old sales adage. Uh, you know, if you're the one asking, if you're the one doing most of the talking in sales, you're the one losing. So if the salesman's just blah, 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 talking about the product or whatever, they're going to lose the sale. But if the customer, the potential customer, the prospect is the one talking about what they want and what they need and, you know, and you can show them how the product gives you that, then you'll usually get the sale. And the same thing's kind of true for police. Whoever's doing the most of the talking is the one going to likely lose that situation, even though we are talking about a serious power disparity where there's one man with a gun and the ability to use it uh you know basically get away with murder if necessary but that said if you're asking questions you can it also helps you clarify what uh, what that cop is saying to you so like when a cop says i'm gonna have to ask you to let me search your car or i'm gonna, I'm gonna have to ask to search your car or something like that then you can say something like are you asking or are you ordering you know and that's one of the things i said yeah when that I, was fun that was, was funny on that video yeah when i was getting out of the the side the passenger side of the car and they demanded that i get back in I made sure to clarify. Or are you asking me? Because I think he said something. I'm gonna. I'm asking you to get yeah, back. Yeah, I gotta ask you to get back in or right. something. And I said, well, are you just asking me? And that's when he clarified. No, no, he's demanding that I get back in the car. And if I don't, I'm gonna be charged with uh, disorderly conduct. And you know, back to your original point, Brian. Um, yeah, I absolutely advocate not taking the plea deal. And I also do it in my own life. I mean, I I did not take the plea on the last trial that I went to, where I was also facing two years in prison on these nonsense uh, ID charges. Um, I've taken parking tickets to trial rather than, you know, because remember, when you pay uh, a fine, if you get hit with a speeding ticket or a parking ticket or something like that, one of these sort of regular traffic citations, whenever you fill out that form and you cut a check, you just took a plea. You pled guilty when you cut them that check. And so, you know, the, the plea deal isn't always necessarily put forth as, you know, an offer by someone. It's just it could just be there on the piece of paper like you're pleading guilty by cutting that check. So, yeah, I do recommend that. And if you want to learn more about it, I suggest you go to don't and that'll pull up the actual flyer that we utilize here in Keene on a regular basis, handing it out to folks at the courthouse. Don't plea.freekeen.com. We'll take you right to that. Brian, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Hour number three is on the way. I still have the numbers since our earlier caller asked for them. We were talking about the police. You know, how dangerous is this job? Oh, uh, yes. There's a pretty shocking statistic here. We'll give it to you coming up. Great. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters? Buy 
pears and salads too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, December 11th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,231, silver around $17.16, and Bitcoin is trading around $360. Today's precious metal prices brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct Storable Food. Redefining the way you think about storable food. Learn more at eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat. In the news, a new federal bill introduced by Representative Mike Pompeo would reaffirm that labeling of foods containing genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, is voluntary. Pompeo has the support of the food industry. Democrats and Republicans. Some Democrats worried that labeling would be misleading, while others worried that the cost of labeling would be passed on to the consumer. Critics of GMO food say they have a right to know what's in their food. Vermont recently became the first state to require labeling. If Pompeo's measure passes, it would override Vermont's law. President Barack Obama recently announced a new initiative designed to help indigenous American youth overcome obstacles such as substance abuse and poverty. The plan was announced at the 6th Annual White House Tribal Nations Conference. At the same time, the White House released the 2014 Native Youth Report, which examines the ways that federal policy has contributed to the struggles of the Native youths. Among indigenous American populations, suicide is the second leading cause of death for those between the ages of 10 and 24. A new study has found that there are an estimated 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic floating in the oceans. Published in the PLOS One Journal, the study found that plastic is spread throughout the world and weighs around 270,000 tons. The researchers stated the figures were highly conservative and did not take into account plastic that may no longer be afloat. The Liberty Beat is made possible by the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. Support for Liberty Beat also comes from My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, December 11th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Hundreds of Hong Kong police officers closed in on the city's main protest site Thursday afternoon to clear streets of pro-democracy demonstrators and terminate the mass civil disobedience movement that has occupied major roads in the South China City for over 10 weeks. Earlier Thursday, bailiffs backed by police to enforce a court injunction met no resistance as they removed protesters' barricades in one part of the protest area. USA Today reports the injunction was brought by a bus company that has complained of disruption to its business operations. Children who are exposed to higher levels of phthalate chemicals in late pregnancy score lower than other children on intelligence tests at age 7. A new study published in the PLOS One Journal followed 328 New York women in low-income communities from pregnancy until the children were 7 years old. Phthalates are generally found in soaps, nail polish, hairspray, shower curtains, raincoats, car interiors, and dryer sheets. Researchers at London's Imperial College and the University of Glasgow have developed an ingredient that makes food more filling and may help prevent overweight people from gaining more weight. 
The ingredient contains propanate, which is a natural substance that causes a reduction of hunger. This broadcast of the Liberty Beat is courtesy of Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Thursday, December 11th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A hot new murder craze sweeps Chicago. Things that shouldn't be said in modern society are said 1,400 times at the RNC, and a brave woman enters a restaurant without first looking it up online. This is the Onion Week in Review. The World Wildlife Fund quickly backtracked Thursday from a recently released press statement saying panda ears are, quote, absolutely delicious. Organization officials noted that while panda ears do taste amazing braised, steamed, fried, or cooked in an omelet, they should not have announced it publicly, nor should they have ever eaten any part of a cheetah, giraffe, or bang tiger, no matter how good they may be. According to company sources, the Netflix board of directors held a tense series of meetings earlier this morning to decide whether the fantasy comedy Michael is streamworthy. The board reportedly sat through its mandatory two back-to-back -back screenings of the 1996 film starring John Travolta as an angel visiting Earth, all while passionately arguing over the film's story, acting, and level of enjoyment upon subsequent viewings to determine if the movie should be available through its instant viewing program. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you here to take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. And you can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out to us in that way. And uh, with you in the studio tonight, Ian and... Danica. Also. And James. James. <laughs> James Yay, Cleveland James. is here with us. Uh, and he's stuck with us throughout the whole show. He originally was just going to do an hour, and I appreciate you sticking around because it's been fun. Uh, and James, you are a busy, busy, busy man. You've opened up a uh, thrift store recently. You've entered the world of uh, the entrepreneur, which is an exciting change for anyone to make in their life. Uh, you, for a long while, had been working as an accountant. Yep. You're still doing accounting, but now as your own boss, mm -hmm. uh, basically. And you're doing much more than that. You're actually moving furniture around. You've opened up a thrift store here in town. And you guys are already kind of racking up some interesting stories of sort of the you know the business end of things and, and how free uh, business is here in New Hampshire compared to other states. You were telling me off the air that you used to live in Georgia, and you've done some business in Georgia, and it was a lot harder to do business down there. Oh yeah, it was like the uh, it was like the Soviet Union trying to open a business <laughs> in Georgia. To be honest with you, it was like um, so many hurdles to overcome. It's like okay, uh, so I tried to open my business in Gwinnett County, and they're like, oh, you got to fill out all these forms. I fill them out. Well, you filled them out incorrectly. Uh, redo them. Okay, Ugh. so I, I redid them. Uh, oh well. You also have to do this, and you, you got to get the fire inspection, and that takes you got to schedule it, and it was just like a nightmare. And it's like, oh, you got to have a Georgia sales tax ID, and I said, well, I'm not selling oh taxable goods. Well, it doesn't matter. You still have to have one. And then it's wow. like, and then it's like I open, and I, I, I have no taxable sales, right? I'm, I'm just doing services, and uh, you're still supposed to file the returns with zero zeros. On them. So then they find me for that, like the state of Georgia. Wow. Jeez. And I tell them, like, oh, I'd like to appeal this. And they're like, oh, well, um, you have to pay the fine now. And then uh, after Crazy. 12 months, we'll, you know, we'll, you'll have your review scheduled. And I said, you guys. 12 months. And I said, uh, I said, well, will we'll penalties and interest accrue? And, and they, they couldn't answer that. And I said, <laughs> oh, my God, I better just pay this. I don't want to deal with this. But oh, man. It was like a nightmare down there. So even in the... So you had a few hassles here in Keene from the zoning guys, but it wasn't anything compared to Georgia. Yeah, it was. It's like, it, it's a lot better, even in, quote unquote, one of the most unfree, quote unquote, areas Keene of New Hampshire. Keene is definitely one of the, you know, probably one of the worst, least free of, of all of New Hampshire. But Keene is kind of like, um, almost like it should be part of Vermont or Massachusetts or something. Uh, it, it does have a lot of great, liberty-friendly people here, for sure, but... Um, you know, there are, I guess, more uh, 
people comfortable with government, I suppose, would be how I put it. But Yeah, it's true. Uh, Keene's kind of known as uh, one of the lefty areas of the state, and that's actually part of the reason why I moved here, because, first of all, I think it's easier to communicate the ideas of liberty to people on the left. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just my experience. But secondly, because it's a challenge. There are a lot of people here who are straight-up authoritarian you know, status types who love there, the state. There are huge advantages, though, to this area, too, Um if I was doing this kind of business in Manchester, uh, I'd be a lot more nervous. In, in Keene, why is that? Uh, well, one of the things it's like culturally ingrained. Uh, I guess it's that leftist attitude. The people want to support small businesses. They, mm. they it's kind of like they, it gives them yeah. a warm and fuzzy, and they, you know. Well, I mean, just look at just look at downtown Keene. I mean, there's yep. hardly any. I mean, there's a few chain places. I mean, I know there's Subway and down there, um, and. You know, and, you know, Cumberland Farms is kind of a New England thing, but for the most part, it's just it's very you know independent businesses. It's true. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Andrew is listening in St. George, Utah, to KZNU. Andrew, you're on the air on Free Talk Live. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Go ahead, sir. So I've got. Uh, I was just looking at some of these numbers here, and we've got uh, uh, FBI shows that 27 law enforcement officers killed in 2013. So that's 27, and uh, and then according to the State Department. It says that uh, in, in 2011, 17 U.S. citizens killed by terrorism, and uh, the, the numbers are unofficial, but the uh, amount of people, amount of U.S. citizens killed by police is 5,000 for the next, for the past uh, decade. So now they, the federal government does not keep numbers on uh, police shooting and killing you know, citizens. So, mm-hmm. so wait, what you're saying <laughs> is, is that you're at a much you're, greater you're risk more, of being killed by a cop than by someone who might be considered a terrorist. So yeah, you're eight times more likely to be killed by a policeman wow. than a so-called terrorist. So that, you know, in general, if we think that the police are there to protect us, the numbers and the truth and the reality of it is that we should all be spending trillions of dollars protecting ourselves from the police instead of terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be fascinating. Wow. Yeah, good call, man. Anything else you want to share tonight, Andrew? Um, yeah, what uh, as far as you guys um talk talking about this uh this gentleman's trial, uh which is just horrific that I mean it's like who watches the cops, you know? That's our duty as a citizen, a so called citizen, you know. Uh, is to watch the police and the government because otherwise, you know, the the reason for having the government is because people say that, oh, I'm afraid of something. I'm afraid that this might happen, so we need the cops. And that means you're afraid of other people. That's understandable. Mm-hmm. But if you're afraid of other people, then you should be afraid of, of the government because they are comprised of people. Right. The government's so, just usually strangers. And uh, the difference yeah. between them and average strangers is these strangers have the ability to use violence against you and get away with it. So, yeah, you should be really concerned with that and have your video cameras out. And, and don't let the, the fact that the police are pushing to have their own cameras dissuade you from having your own camera uh, and use that to hold these guys accountable. I've seen so many times, I can't count, where having a camera... I'm certain has changed the way, changed the outcome of a situation involving the police and somebody I didn't know on the street, just the police messing with somebody on the streets. I've seen it time and time again where the police will just pack up and get out of there or they won't, you know, they'll issue a warning rather than a ticket or they won't arrest somebody that they normally would have arrested under other circumstances. I swear the camera changes everything and usually for the better. Yeah, it, it does. What What do you guys think about the live streaming uh aspect of it considering okay if i keep it on my phone will that this these scumbags can you know look on your phone and delete it obviously they can't always figure that out but you know is there is there a good live streaming place to be like oh i'm live streaming this so suck it (laughs) yeah i think live streaming is the way to go and actually i looked into uh, after my arrest i looked in so one of my complaints about live streaming is like normally it's on your phone or whatever Mm. Uh, they're finally coming out with like decent camcorders that you can like stream, you know, good quality video to the internet. So, I think it is definitely the future, and I'm I'm really happy about that. Here's what's uh, what right. I would recommend for you, Andrew, and for anybody out there. 
Uh, smartphones, of course, are more ubiquitous now than ever before. The last numbers I saw, which were probably about a year ago, so I imagine they're more, even more so than these numbers might suggest, but uh, it was around 60% of U.S. adults who have a smartphone, and that would mean that about 60% of U.S. adults have a video camera device on them at all times throughout their day. So what I would recommend is that you download an app called Bambuser, B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R. That is... I believe is the current best of of the various That's different my favorite free too. recording slash streaming apps. My one gripe with Bambuser right now is that they don't keep a copy on your phone; that it only uploads to their server. And uh, if well, okay, it's on your phone until they finish the upload to the server, and then once the upload to the server is done, they wipe it off your phone for some reason. So there's no way to have a backup or anything. It's just on their server. It's on their server, right? Oh. So I like it, having it on my phone too. That way, it's there as well, and if I need to access it quickly, I can just do that. Uh, but it's it's free software, so you know what do you want? Uh, but Bambuser, right. that's that's pretty good, and that's something that you can use to stream live to the internet and then you can tell the cops hey i'm streaming this live to the internet and even if you aren't streaming live to the internet you could still you could still bs them and you could say uh i may be streaming this live to the internet that way you're not actually telling a lie because in some places it's illegal to lie to the police but uh, you could say i might maybe streaming this live to the internet and then they'll have to guess whether or not you're telling the truth on that and uh, change their behavior as it may. Thanks, Andrew, for your call tonight. Toll free number 855 450 free. That's our toll free number. And by the way, somebody had asked in the last hour, they said they wanted the numbers on how dangerous it is to be a cop. I've got those numbers and we will share them with you in a moment. Andrew gave you one statistic, uh, but we'll give you a little bit more info- information here because turns out being a cop isn't so dangerous compared to other professions and even compared to being a cop in the past. Some shocking information coming up here. 855 450 free. Even I was surprised by this. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger that's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent what the free state project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is it's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Talk Live. I wouldn't snitch them out. I would report them to the police. Right. Okay, now... Call uh, what you want, uh, Now, many states have laws about carrying firearms, even though their constitutions say that it's legal for everyone to own a firearm. Like and, New York and State. It, there's no way to ban it. Would you snitch out somebody that you knew had a firearm? If they had it illegally, I wouldn't snitch them out. I would report them. Right. I got to say you're a bad American, Ken. Yeah. I think um, you're a scumbag, Ken. You're a communist. You're I'm a not communist. Look, I'm a communist because I want people to be able to carry guns, like the Second Amendment says. He'd snitch on the person, and then the cops would come and infringe it for him. Out there carrying guns at will. I'm a convicted felon. Do you think I shouldn't be able to pre- protect my wife from a, a an intruder? I, do, I don't think you should have a gun. How am I going to protect myself if the guy has a gun? 
there are many other ways to protect yourself and not having a gun. You should but call the cops, Mark, like any good citizen. That way the cops can come clean up my corpse after it's all over, right? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free to bring up anything you want. You can also call us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request. We'll approve it. And that'll be easy for you to call us from that point forward on Skype. You can also call the old-fashioned way, the toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Tis the season for some berries from Sherry's Berries. We've talked about Sherry's Berries in the past on Free Talk Live, so if you've heard us rant about it before, this will sound awfully familiar. But if you're new to the show... Sherry's Berries is its an amazing product. It's a great gift. I mean, gifts that you can eat, I like those. I really like those um, because, you know, they're special, especially freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries. They are irresistible, and they're dipped in white milk and dark chocolate. They can be topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts, and it's a delicious present that uh, you don't really have to feel guilty about eating. They're strawberries, and they pick, by the way, I didn't mention this earlier, they pick some of the best strawberries. I don't know if they, like, order A-grade or A-plus grade strawberries, but they're always, like, Where really are Sherry's juicy. Berries based out of? That's a darn good question. I wonder, uh, yeah, I w- you wonder if they- caught me uh, flat-footed on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if they've got different distribution centers so that they ship it to the closest to you so that the fruit stays. That's an longer. excellent question as well, but I do know that uh, they will ship fast. So when, nice. you're, when you buy Sherry's Berries, uh, you know, you, you're getting like, oh, I think it's overnight shipping. I mean, this is- Oh, wow, okay. It, it comes to you fast, and they've got like ice packs in there, so the box arrives nice and cool. Um, even though it's wintertime up here in New Hampshire, we did get these, I think, last year during uh, Mother's Day, which obviously not wintertime. And they were nice and cool as soon as you pop them out of the box. So they do a great job Yum. packaging. Yeah, they're packaged real nice. It's a nice gift. And uh, and it's only nineteen ninety nine. That's the starting price. You, know, you, you factor in shipping and things like that. It gets to be a little bit little bit pricier. But what you want to do is you want to double the berries for just $10 more. Trust me on this one. You want to double the berries for $10 more. And you got to use the special Free Talk Live discount code to get these deals, whether it's the $19.99 or the $10 more. Use code FTL over at berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Unless your loved one hates strawberries uh, or chocolate, then this is a perfect gift for just about anybody else. Berries.com. Click on the microphone in the top right-hand corner. Type in FTL to get the deals. And you know what? If you know someone who hates strawberries, I know one of these people. I've I've met one person who hates strawberries. I knew someone that was actually allergic to strawberries. I've never heard of a strawberry allergy, although I'm, I'm sure there are out there. If you are one of those unfortunate people, well, they've got other great products like Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and even dipped pretzels. So go check out the inventory over at berries.com and use code FTL to get the special deals as we go to your calls and thoughts. And then we'll come up with uh, the details on uh, this. Well, somebody had asked for some numbers about what's the most dangerous career. Are the is being a cop particularly dangerous and we've got the statistics here we'll get into that but first we've got rob from the rebel uh, rebel love show out in manchester on via skype rob matthias welcome to free talk live hey rob 
Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, first off, must say I'm still on a high from James Cleveland's uh, keynote at Keenvention. <laughs> it was that good. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'm driving down to Boston. I rarely ever listen to Free Talk Live live. I usually listen to it as podcast. Mm. But uh, I want to get your guys' uh, opinion on the police having cameras on them. Because here with the whole Eric Garner thing, I mean, a police officer was videotaped killing someone in cold blood on the street over a tax. And he got away, you know, he got away scot-free. So my opinion is I kind of feel as if it's a good idea to have cameras on police because now, you know, good cops, not good cops, but cops that like actually do what they're supposed to do for the most part, um, aren't going to let like, you know, uh, a kid with pot on him or... If they're pro Second Amendment, let someone that's violating like a gun permit uh, away. Like, look, take a you know, have a blind eye because now they're on camera and mm. they can be fired for doing something like that. That's- yeah, that's the. Uh, I think that's the risk. Um, I would agree with you. Uh, they may use the footage for bad, but it's just like any technology. Uh, does the good outweigh the bad? And and that's the real question. Like, they could use it to say, oh, well, here is video of you jaywalking, Rob. You know, you're screwed or whatever. There's a strong point that you're making there, and another good point that someone made against the idea of police having cameras on them uh, was that you know this could be used for the, 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 the what do they call the panopticon? I think is what the Jared surveillance Jay called state. It. The surveillance state, you know, tying it into facial recognition software. So as a cop walks down the street, some computer is identifying wanted suspects or or whatever. Uh, that's also a concern. But, uh, of course, if the cops were actually just going after violent people, that wouldn't really be as much of a concern. But uh, to the point that you're making that maybe if the cop was otherwise going to look the other way at someone that he caught with some marijuana, that that would somehow change his behavior. I wonder about that because, well, what's the likelihood that there's someone at the police department reviewing all eight hours of footage or whatever, or I guess they would probably only review the the incidents where whatever incident happened. They, I guess it could happen, right? Like somebody, they pay somebody to randomly check the officers and see, you know, if what yeah, they do an were, audit or something. Yeah, to audit them. So I don't think that everybody who looked the other way or every incident in which the, you know, there was a cop that looked the other way would necessarily get them in trouble. But you might be right. It may, might create sort of an aura of fear over the officer and make them more likely to make an arrest. I, well, I will say I, I'm pleased that uh, they made the license plate cameras uh, illegal in New Hampshire. But That's true. The yeah. only state. Well, I also... Yeah. I agree with both of you that it could definitely be used to twist things around, make it look like in their favor. But I remember Coplock as well as uh, Mark sharing this image where uh, officers in Rialto, California were required to wear uh, video cameras while on duty. And then in just one year, their use of force uh, was dropped uh, significantly by 60 percent and complaints Mm -hmm. dropped by almost 90 percent. So, I mean, I, I certainly agree with both of you that it would it could definitely be used in pretty terrible ways. But, you know, it. I would like to go a step further. Um, They should have to, let's say they have cameras. Okay, it'd be like, okay, uh, James Cleveland, uh, 1212, it's uh, 8 p.m., I'm checking in for the day. They should have like narrate their day and then upload it Hmm. to YouTube and be like, I'm I'm turning off the camera because I'm about to go eat lunch or I'm going to the restroom. Hmm. I will, you know, resume recording when done. Like they should have to narrate it and there should be a record. And the public put that on YouTube. There are probably be people who would watch it, you know, <laughs> you know, who knows? But like, what is the disadvantage of, of that per se, you know? So what do you think, Rob? I mean, are you still trying to figure out where you stand on this? Uh, you just, where are you coming well, from? Well, I'm on fav- I'm, not, I'm obviously on favor of, uh, you know, any person filming uh, a government agent. Mm-hmm. You know, that's uh, obviously anytime you're dealing with the government, you should be, especially a cop, you should have a camera on you. Um, but uh, no, I, I'm kind of I have mixed feelings on it. I, I used to be very hardcore and say that all police officers should be wearing their own body cameras. But the surveillance state and the whole fact that it makes uh, it, it, it could cause cops that, that are actually not going to arrest someone for a victimless crime do so for well, their job. Well, okay, but that that argument can be used the other way, right? So like that argument has been made, and I think it's a it's a, it's it's valid. 
uh, that if you are the one with the camera and you're the one who's recording a situation, that the cop could then have to arrest you because you've got your camera out mm. and, you know, he's on the record That's and that point. video could show up on YouTube, so maybe he's got to write the ticket. That's true. Or, or whatever. So it is definitely a, a double-edged sword, and it's something that we're going to... I think the Liberty community seems split on this one. I think the good outweighs the bad. Police I, need to wear cameras. More cameras are good. I think so, too, because I, I've seen the police change their behavior when cameras get turned on. Hey, thanks, Rob, for the call. More coming up. Free Talk Live. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home-cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay 4-in-1 Smart Organic Cooker. Unglaze Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins, and minerals for your good health. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more on your federal or state income taxes, I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. The IRS with their Fresh Start initiative is offering more flexible terms to Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. They can help you lift your wage garnishments, stop bank levies, and put your tax problem behind you once and for all. If you owe tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to the IRS or state, our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, we can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your debt for far less than what you owe. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. Oh, nine. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may take control of the airwaves here. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. 
That's 855-450-3733. And we invite you to our website. You can go there. Get interactive. You can submit content right there to the front page of the site. Maybe it's a YouTube video, a news story, or a blog post. Whatever it is you want to submit, it appears. And then once you've submitted it, and then other listeners can vote. You can vote vote things up if you like them. Vote them down if you don't. It's all totally free. It's a Reddit-based voting system. Go to freetalklive.com and get interactive there. That's freetalklive.com. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Danica. And James. All right, uh, let's go to your calls and thoughts here in a moment. But first, want to let you know about another great gift opportunity. Of course, this will be, this will be good not around the Christmas season because it's just a year-long, I think, excellent ch- uh, choice. Especially if you've got kids in your life. In Freedom's Cause, this is audio theater. And in this case, it's a story about the struggle for freedom. The story of William Wallace. You know that name if you've seen the movie Braveheart. This is kind of like Braveheart, but only historically accurate. And the music is excellent. The voice acting is excellent. The Foley is well done as well. Foley's the sound effects. And uh, it even has some name actors in it, like Joanne Froggett from uh, Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes from Chronicles of Narnia, as well as James Cosmo from Braveheart. So go to infreedomscause.com. You can learn more about it there. You can actually get a study guide with this. And there's even a special family four-pack that we've got a special offer for you on. The family four-pack, you actually get four copies of In Freedom's Cause you can give away as uh, you so choose to your kids or, you know, the nephew or whoever, uh, go to infreedomscause.com and use code FTL to get that family four-pack of the CDs for half price. This is a long presentation, by the way. It's a two-CD uh, set, and uh, it's basically a two-plus-hour audio theater. Infreedomscause.com, coupon code FTL. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, uh, let's go to Nathan. He's in Texas, also via Skype. Nathan, you're on the air. Hey guys. Hey there. Um, first, first, James, I wanted to say uh, I really admire you for that stance that you took there. There's a lot of people who would just kind of, you know, comply with whatever the police told them, and uh, I think it's really heroic that you, just, you know, stood your ground like that. Oh, thank you. Um, so my que- my question was actually of a less weighty matter. I've been really curious lately about this thrift store that's open in Keene. Uh, uh, not so much about the store itself as the process that led up to it, you know, saving money, hiring people, um, filling out whatever government paperwork I suppose they make you fill out. Um, what, what was that process like going from, I guess you said you were an accountant and to uh, basically running a little thrift store in Keene? Oh, so yeah, it was definitely um, a learning process. So I have run businesses in the past. So I kind of, and I'm an accountant, so I'm somewhat, you know, I have some business know-how. Um I would definitely say it's challenging. I mean, it's like a rocket launch. Uh, you you expend so much energy just to get off the ground. You know what I mean? It's like you have to. Even right now, I'm I'm working seven days a week. You know, from pretty much almost the moment I wake up to, uh, you know, when I go to bed at night, I'm 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 thinking about the business or I'm doing something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm doing marketing. I'm doing uh, accounting. I'm uh, I'm pricing items. I'm laying out the store. I'm saying, oh, I should. I can work on the website or I need to do this or, uh, so that can be challenging, but it's very rewarding too. I think, um, I, I was saying over the break, um, I, I think I'm broken now. Like, I don't think I can go work for anyone else. <laughs> like I'm, I'm working so hard, yeah. but it's like, it's such, <laughs> it is so satisfying to be like, uh, uh, in control of your destiny. Either I'm going to make it or I'm, you know, or it's not going to work. It's just fascinating. Well, like, you're as in control as you could be. I mean, obviously you can't control if the customers come through the door. That's but, true. Uh, so I'm not the true boss because yeah. the customer is the boss. That's true. But you're making more decisions than ever before yeah. uh, about what you get to do. And you collect all of the reward rather than having to send all of it off to the boss. And then he sends you a, a, a cut back. Yep. And also it's like, uh, I don't have to, well, you know, I have people I work with, but uh, I'm not like, no, no one's like, oh, you know, you were a minute late or whatever. It's kind of yeah. like I, I'm a now professional. Now you get to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a professional, right? I'm going to open on time and I'm going to make sure uh, the store is staffed and, you know, there are products there. But um, I don't know. Uh, starting the business, too, I guess from the government perspective. So uh, I used to do taxes. I guess I'm ashamed to admit. And uh, <laughs> that was one of my businesses in Georgia. And I opened a business in Gwinnett County. And like I said, it was like the Soviet Union. It's all kinds of nonsense. Um, 
And even it, it was challenging. I had to put down a $700 deposit to get the power turned on. I had to put down a $300 what? deposit to get the gas turned on. Uh, I didn't have to put down any deposit in New Hampshire. That's interesting. The uh, business permit and fees and stuff, I didn't get a permit in New Hampshire. I just pretty much opened. You almost opened, and then code enforcement That's swooped true. in yeah. at the last moment. But you hadn't gone through any government process. Had they had you just swung the doors open without them like spotting you? The thing was, you guys are like right on a main drag, mm-hmm. and uh, of course, we also have a group of haters in town who watch everything we do, and you know, go over with a fine tooth comb. Yeah. So uh, they were likely calling in on you guys, and so then they sw- swooped in and like told you something about signs, and then what else? There was like a fire extinguisher or yeah, something. Uh, uh, yeah, they wanted a fire inspection, and that's something I was somewhat familiar with. Uh, Gwinnett County had that as well. Uh, I would say, on the average, though, it was it was it's, New Hampshire's not perfect. There's still work to be done. I should just be able to put a sign up. Like, yeah, absolutely. I, on your property. Yeah. I have to now. I have to calculate the linear feet of the the, the front of the building. And there's like a formula, <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> I have to submit them a drawing oh, yeah. of how it's going to look like. And, it's just like okay. And didn't you find out that apparently? The, the sign ordinances in Keene were written by the guy yes. who runs the one sign production company yep. in Keene. <laughs> of course. I mean, that's it's, it's total crony capitalism, if you will. Oh, yeah. And didn't I also hear that that sign owner, the sign making company owner is in the group Stop Free Keene yep. and so, has basically been screwing you around on, you know, getting a sign done? <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I'm just going to do it myself. I'm going to fill out the permit, and I'll submit the drawings and whatnot. But. So, so there you go. There's a little bit of information for you, Nathan. Anything else? Uh, no. Uh, well, just one more thing. I was curious. Well, why a thrift store? What did you? What made you think that that would be something that would be in demand? As Good question. To, like a shoe store. Because there are already other- thrift stores in Keene. You're not the first on the scene. Uh, that's true. So, you know, I'm an accountant, so I kind of did my due diligence. Uh, the real key to a good business obviously is, is having the right people and uh my business uh partner um is a gentleman named jay he runs a uh, mail to jail.com he's kind of he's been in new hampshire for a long time he is a uh a pro at this kind of uh industry like he's basically been doing he buys stuff on like and then resells it online exactly basically. so he he has he over a inventory. decade of experience he, yeah. this is his life uh, so I was comfortable enough when uh, him and I were talking about it, and then I did my due diligence. So one of the advantages I had is um, some of the other thrift stores in the area are nonprofits. So being an accountant, I said, oh, well, I can go look at their tax returns. So I could kind of see some numbers. Oh. I could see their expenses. I could see their revenues. So I, I knew ah. there's an opportunity there. But uh, another thing I like about it, and this is kind of, I guess, uh, maybe it's not as important, but... I like how there's like a, a green aspect to it, like recycling. I feel like I'm providing a valuable service. You know, I'm bringing like products to market. And then also I think it's good that if something was going to be thrown out or, well, first off, my thrift store is a little bit more high end. I guess you'd call it that. I don't want junk shop. in there. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's why I don't take donations. Uh, I don't want like, like you're, you're not going to go in there and find like, um, I don't know, everything being a dollar or something. Yeah. You know, I have nice furniture. If you buy a coat or jacket, it's likely going to have the tag on it or it's going to be in really tip top shape. You know, I just, I don't want to have like holes in it and things like that. Stuff I would want to purchase hmm. and have on my own is kind of what I'm stocking here. But uh, I, I would say the main reason, of course, would probably be Jay. That's, your partner. Yeah. So I would say you, you should definitely, if you're going to open your own business, what you're good at uh, is what you should do. Move to New Hampshire first, though, before you do it. And thanks, Nathan, for your call tonight. And take the plunge. It is it is nerve-wracking. It's a risk, but well, you had it's to, rewarding. You, you quit your job uh, yeah. over this, and that was one of the things you were struggling with in the beginning. And I said, you're going to want to do this because mm-hmm. you wouldn't have any time. You already didn't have any time after you know when you were working. So oh, yeah. now, you, now that you don't have a job, you still have no time. <laughs> More coming up. Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? 
stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. John Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. There's still enough time to get your thoughts in here if you call in now. You can also join us on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Tonight with you in studio, it's Ian. And Annika. And James. James Cleveland is here from Robin Hood of Keene. You can visit them online via Facebook. Just go to, just type in Robin Hood of Keene and it'll come up. Also, you can go to robinhood.freekeen.com. If you're new to Robin Hood and you don't know what that means, it means filling the meters of expi- expired meters, par- parking meters that have been expired before the meter maid can reach the meter to write a ticket. And it has resulted in a lot of controversy. We really haven't even talked about Robin Hooding tonight. The the case uh, that we've discussed in the past is still at the Supreme Court. The court had their hearing a couple of months ago. 
probably is going to be sometime in 20, probably early, maybe sometime in winter 2015, when the court will make its ruling as to whether or not uh, people who are out and about can talk to government employees <laughs> in critical ways. And that's ultimately, it's ultimately a free speech case and it's fascinating. And there's a lot of information at freekeen.com if you want to learn more about that. Um, I want to bring Bill on here in West Virginia. And then I do want to go real quick through the, the numbers that I found because I promised our, our caller earlier that we would talk about this. And I do have the numbers about police fatalities. How often are cops dying on the job? Is this actually one of the most dangerous jobs? Let's go first, though, to Bill. He's in West Virginia uh, listening to WVTS. Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, how you all doing up there? Super. Great. Hey, good. Fantastic. What I wanted to do is uh, comment about the surveillance state. It's not so much that they're watching. It's the fact that there are so many laws on the books that they can pick and choose from. And as soon yes. as you walk out the door, you're violating some kind of law. That's a good now point. They can, they can, yeah, and also, they pick and choose who they're going to arrest. A good example of, of that is all the surveillance tapes they had in Missouri when they were watching those people burn down all the businesses over there. Mm -hmm. They did not arrest these people and put them in jail. But they had plenty of video, plenty of uh, surveillance video to round these people up and, and charge and with the crimes that they committed, but they decided they weren't going to do that. Wow. In fact, the president of the United States decided he was going to say that they were perfectly legitimate in doing this sort of thing. Well, that's probably because it was actually the cops that were setting the fires. I mean, we've seen some crazy stories about uh, police provocateurs that are undercover. There was a headline. It's been the picture's been all over Facebook. Photography is not a crime. dot com has the story. Undercover cop aims gun at photographer during a march in Oakland. Uh, what happened was these guys were acting as though they were protesters. Someone apparently called them out as being undercover cops, and when the cop basically lost his cover, he f flipped out and grabbed his gun and literally points it at a photographer. I mean, this is one of the scariest pictures yeah, I've, I've seen. Yeah, well, my point was that they can pick and choose whomever they want to arrest. They took Dinesh D'Souza, and they put him in jail for six months for doing something that Barack Obama's bundlers are doing and have been doing for the last six years. They decided they were going to zero in on him. Mm. They did the same thing with the governor of Texas. And now, they, and they went after the people at AP and also uh, with uh, J James Rosen of Fox News. They did the same thing. You're talking about targeting? targeting journalists? You're talking about where they've targeted Tar journalists? Yeah, that's I'm, happened. I'm talking about targeting anybody they want to. Yeah. Oh, it's they true. Can, they can create crimes whenever they feel like it. Absolutely. They can make oh, yeah. it up as they go along. Yeah. And they don't have to have any rhyme or reason as long as it's along their ideological uh, path. They well, can and on, and most to. cases, they're going to get away with it, too, Bill. I share your frustration. I recommend you check out copblock.org if you haven't done so already. They, uh, they've they got some great coverage there of the stuff that you find very frustrating. Thank you for the call tonight. Right. Uh, let's go real quick here to buy the numbers. How dangerous is it to be a cop? This story from FEE.org. Turns out that it's actually never been safer in the last 100 plus years to be a cop than it is today. According to the details here, a few police officers die in the line of duty. Since 1900, only 18,781 police officers have died from any work-related injury. That's an average of 164 per year. In absolute terms, officer fatalities peaked in 1930 during alcohol prohibition Aww. at 297, spiking again in the 1970s before steadily declining since then. If you look at police fatalities adjusted for the U.S. population, the decline is even starker. 2013 was the safest year for American policing since 1875. And in 2013, out of 900,000 sworn officers, just 100 died from a job-related injury. Now, remember, that doesn't mean necessarily being shot by somebody. It's job-related injury. It could mean they got crushed under their car or something like that. <clears throat> so that breaks down to 11.1 per 100,000. That's a rate of 0.01%. So how does that compare to other jobs in America? Well... Thankfully, we have the Bureau of Labor Statistics data, which shows the top 10 da most dangerous jobs in the United States. This data was from 2013. So again, remember that number for the police, 11.1 per 100,000 cops. They die uh, per year. 
So here's the top 10. Number 10, construction laborers. They have 17.7 per 100,000 die. Oh, yeah. So the cops aren't even close to construction workers. I don't know where they rank, but I would imagine it's closer to 20 than it is uh, to, to number 10. Yeah, that's what I used to do. I used to do construction. So Number 9, electrical power line installers and repairers with 21.5 out of 100,000. Eight, farmers, ranchers, and other agriculture managers, 21.8 out of 100,000. Number seven, drivers slash truck drivers, etc., uh, 22 out of 100,000. Mining machine operators at number six, 26.9 out of 100,000. Number five, refuse and recyclable material collectors, believe it or not, 33 out of 100,000 die in that job each year. Number four, roofers. A t- totally yeah, separate category from to construction. <laughs> oh, just yeah. because it's that much more dangerous. With 38.7 uh, roofers dying out of 100,000 roofers. Now, again, comparing that to the just the average construction laborer, that's almost that's twice as dangerous. It's, that's twice as dangerous to be a roofer compared to other construction jobs. Uh, going on here, number three, aircraft pilots and flight engineers. Uh, 50.6 out of 100,000. I'm actually kind of surprised yeah, I'm by that. I'm shocked at that. That's interesting. <laughs> airline travel is generally considered very, very safe uh, compared to, say, driving somewhere. Number two, fishers and related fishing workers with 75 out of 100,000 dying in those careers. Deadliest catch, anybody? And not quite. Number one, the deadliest job, loggers. Logging workers are 91.3. They're 91.3 deaths out of 100,000 uh, full-time workers there. So loggers compared to cops, cops again with 11.1 out of 100,000, loggers with 91 out of 100,000. So no, nowhere near as dangerous as construction, loggers, etc., uh, the cops, it's much safer. In fact, again, the numbers I'll show you, and I'll link to this FEE study over at our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access those by going to news.freetalklive.com. I'll link to this study, and they've got a really cool graph where they plot over 100 years. Little blue dots uh, show you how, how many cops died you know, year by year by year, and they've just been going. It's just been going down, down, down since 1973, basically. Uh, so we continue here with your calls and thoughts. We go to Perry, listening in New Hampshire, to our Nashua affiliate, WSMN. Hey, Perry. Hey, how you doing? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Um, free state, yeah, that, that sounds like a great idea. Um, you want 20,000 people in here. Now, my question being is how many new jobs have been created in the state? Well, I've created uh, four new jobs myself, so You'd there's by opening four. Your own business. Yeah. So, so there is only a couple more jobs to make. <laughs> well, there's well, lots not- of new jobs being created. I mean, as new people move here, they bring new talents and new abilities. And as James pointed out, he opened up his own business. He created jobs. There are business owners uh, who are moving sure, their businesses yeah. here. Um, so as more people enter into a given area, that creates a greater demand on products and services. And so there are needs to be more products and services available to fill that demand. So it's you know it doesn't matter how many people move to New Hampshire. New jobs will be created. Well, New Hampshire has a very low unemployment rate. And I know Comcast you know, opened up a call center, um, I believe, earlier this year and really? created about you know 1,500 jobs right there. Sweet. Yeah. I, yeah, I've the, never had a problem getting a uh, a job here in uh, the Keene area. I can't speak for elsewhere in New Hampshire, but compared to the Atlanta area where I was from, it was very difficult to find a job down there. I mean, it, it was like it, it was great moving here. I came up to Keene. I spent a week looking for a job. I had three job offers in a week. It was just incredible. I couldn't believe it. It just how. And I'm not saying like that's going to be for everyone, but I was just shocked at yeah, the job well, market. Yeah, well, I got blacklisted on a job, and I haven't worked in about eight years, so I'll have to do what you did and create my own work. That's the best way to do it. I thank you, Perry, but we're short on time tonight. Hey, thank Thanks you. for the call. I appreciate hearing from you. Yeah, uh, that's a great idea. If you can't get a job, then figure out what you can do to bring a unique product or service to the marketplace, and that you know hopefully you'll be happy doing. See you tomorrow night, freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are 
having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, December 11, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,231, silver around $17.16, and Bitcoin is trading around $360. Today's precious metal prices brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct Storable Food. Redefining the way you think about storable food. Learn more at eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat. In the news, a new federal bill introduced by Representative Mike Pompeo would reaffirm that labeling of foods containing genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, is voluntary. Pompeo has the support of the food industry. Democrats and Republicans. Some Democrats worried that labeling would be misleading, while others worried that the cost of labeling would be passed on to the consumer. Critics of GMO food say they have a right to know what's in their food. Vermont recently became the first state to require labeling. If Pompeo's measure passes, it would override Vermont's law. President Barack Obama recently announced a new initiative designed to help indigenous American youth overcome obstacles such as substance abuse and poverty. The plan was announced at the 6th Annual White House Tribal Nations Conference. At the same time, the White House released the 2014 Native Youth Report, which examines the ways that federal policy has contributed to the struggles of the Native youths. Among indigenous American populations, suicide is the second leading cause of death for those between the ages of 10 and 24. 